the Podong Punk I'm Lord Mike Bedlam. And I'm scaling out. And we're not saints and all that good shit. Uh, we are here with Paradrive. I do want to say you said the name right first. Hair dry, Hair dry. Cool. Right off, yeah. right out of the gate. Do you know how many times I practiced that? <laughs> yeah. Right, for real? I got Paradre, Piridri, yeah. Paradri. That's got that one. Padrari. That's Paradil. Nice. That's... For, that for the first the first time I actually the first time I actually said your name, it was like Panadry. I was like, wait. That doesn't sound right. Not even an N in it. Yeah, I was like, exactly. I was like, where the fuck the N comes from? Just making shit up. (laughs) Well, yeah, whatever. Okay, we got this, guys. We got these. So. As if you guys don't get enough shit for your Yeah. So, by the way, by the way, I wanted to take a guess of what your name meant. Oh, cool. So, and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't interrupt. (laughs) Um... Pear is two, and dry is three. In German. In German. So a pair of threes? <laughs> yes? You're like half right. <laughs> yeah. Well, like half 50%. Solid 50%. It's weird that you got you know, the I mean, German bit, but not the kind of more common English prefix. Oh, no. Yeah. Which is just para is a prefix of side by side. Okay. So that's that's kind of it. The side by three people side, side by side, side. and the oh, whole triangle thing. Is, that's yeah. dope. I actually, I actually <laughs> put that together. Wow. I like wow. that. Mind blown. Mind fucking so, blown. <laughs> y'all are from Lancaster, PS. Lancaster. Thank you so much for coming down. Yeah, here. yeah. Of course. Of course. La- is it Lancaster or Lancaster? Lancaster. Because yeah. I say Lancaster because I used to work in Mannheim. That's well, there, you there, there you go. You I used it. to work at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I love yeah. that. Place. I had, uh, dude, I, I was selling chocolate covered bananas and cheesecake. That, that was like that was super every, Renaissance. Every field trip. <laughs> That's what I said. I grew up like five miles from there, so every field trip was to the Ren Fair. It was so. It was pretty good. You, you get I that mean, like that mutton leg thing, and yeah, mm, with like the yeah. tendons. In I got it. all this. I, I got cool so with primal. the dudes. I got cool with the dudes at the chicken sandwich stands. Oh yeah, and like. Like I just I would go up, yo, dude, hook me up, and he'd be like, all right, and he gave me like two chicken patties with like fries on top of it. I was like, how am I gonna finish this shit with like for like seven dollars? You can get that myself. massive dill pickle on a stick. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, like, <laughs> Viagra dill. Dude, like, I, dude, Viagra, <laughs> somebody just pickle. soak this shit. <laughs> fucking <laughs> yes, the liquid Viagra. It would take me like twenty minutes to eat one pickle. <laughs> could you could you imagine that deep fried? Mm. Mm. Deep fried giant pickle. That'd be a meal into itself. Yeah. That was fun. It, it, good time. Get, get in me. Yeah. yeah but yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming over that down, guys. It, we, we really appreciate yeah, your time. Of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, why don't you all introduce yourselves and what you play? Oh, I'm Cooge and I play bass. I'm Nick. I play guitar and sing. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm Trevor and I play the drums. Dope. Yeah. yeah. My guys. Our guys. Our guys. So who mostly yeah. like handles the uh, the business aspect of the group? Mm. Nick. Yeah, I'd basically Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't like to do it, so <laughs> somebody <laughs> has. Somebody to. Has to. <laughs> we're not. We're not disciplined. Well, <laughs> It's kind of the way it is. Like Mike naturally steps up to the plate, so I don't have to. But yeah, because I'm the one that knows how to socialize. Socialize socially, positively. You know, uh, tell people off. I guess. It's like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not going to do that, but you could do this for us. That I'm, like, I'm, I'm that say, guy. Fuck off. So no. you're, you're the bulldog. <laughs> yeah, I'm, ba- I'm basically <laughs> the. Uh, what's that? You want us to sell tickets? I don't know, man. We're going on first, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he does the good cop. I do the bad cop. Yeah. Because yeah. once once they start talking shit, he gets on the fucking messenger like, oh, "You motherfucker, why? Why can't you do this? We want fifty percent, not 60. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, well, hold on, AJ. I'm going a little slow there. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, why don't you guys kind of describe your uh, your sound a little bit? Like, uh, what what influence? I noticed you guys have a really really distinct sound. Like, I couldn't really put a a, a finger on. It was such a blend of like the the only way I could describe it was like if if the members of Weezer all did like. Hard time in jail. Man, I love. It. <laughs> huh, That's you know? a new one. That's really good. Like, they all had like a lot more edge to them and got older and like had a lot more, you know, like I shivered. So I'm just like shit and like, Rivers Cuomo in recovery or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but still keeping one toe in like the <laughs> yeah. Well, I get a lot of um, toe. I get a lot of like tool and system yeah. of down vibes. Yeah, it's definitely the system I, of a down. I, I I love that shit. You guys system was probably the well. first band Thank that you. they compared us to like really early on, particularly tool? your voice the system. system. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, uh, for myself, it was definitely I I love tool mm-hmm. and system of a down and. I can't say I'm not a fan of Weezer, but I haven't given them the time of day. I just saw Weezer. We we just saw Weezer on uh, Sunday. All right, on how was that? that? Oh, dude, it was fucking great. He yeah. came out in a little like boat float and started playing uh, the. He came out in a little boat float with Weezer symbol on the back of it, and he started playing the solo to uh, uh, Paranoid. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking great that's he, super cool so, so then when they finished the song he went into his little cause every show they do that a little acoustic bit and shit uh, and he's just like I'm gonna play a couple jams on my boat uh, <laughs> and then they All played right. then he played Stand By Me acoustic it was weird uh-huh. Yeah, because that whole album that they just did, not the black one, the teal the one, one before that. Was yeah, all that, it was all covers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did no scrubs, and I'm not gonna lie, it was really good. I believe that. that it was really fucking good. I liked it. Right on. But um, how, how would you guys describe like the evolution of of your sound in general? Well, we didn't know how to write songs when we started. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a learning process. So we're we're on the curve. Um, hey, there's a lot of different time signatures when we started writing. Like, yeah, it was the first two or three songs, and it was just like it was s- weird and not for the better. No, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. It was. It took us too long to write one song. It was like maybe we should dial this back a little bit. Yeah. In terms of the sound, I think the sound has just been honed. Like, yeah. There are some times that we stepped into, like. I don't want to say genty, but there was more like it was more like riff rock. Like there was in terms of like the songs that we wrote that didn't actually see the light of day. Like sure, there was bits of that, and then there was some mm-hmm. mainstream ones. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, and, thanks, Jamie. <laughs> and I don't know what else, you know. But it's it's clearer now. Like as we write stuff, to say is like that's not us. Yeah, but it's, it's also well, not like we even like write to a genre or anything like that. No, we're just you know. There's a direction we'll we'll tend to try and go in, but also now that we're coming up on, um, you know, it's time to put out more music. It's like how can we continue to, to diversify? We're experimenting we a lot. Yeah, experimenting a lot. Um, and that, that's that's a good thing because a lot of bands are scared to experiment nowadays because right. it's like everybody's just going for one sound. Yeah. You know, it's it's people don't like this. It's all the really shit. polished, yeah, like all, all right. polished overproduced. And, you know, like that's that's the nice thing about where we came from was starting out so weird that it feels like anything is kind of fair game. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been a band. Nick and I have been a part of this band for seven years now, which is absurd. <laughs> and and who just at least known us that entire time, mm. yeah. let alone being a band the past almost two years now. So uh, it's. Just starting out and calling yourself a name that you made up mm. is another good way to, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to feel like yeah, you, there's no there's no constraints or anything like that. So, but what's really nice is without even trying, the, the next batch of songs sounds, I think, it, it's perfectly sort of like pigeonholed into. That's not the right word, but it, it's settled into what my, in my mind what Paradise sounds like in a way that's like. It's just cool. Whereas the first like handful of songs we wrote, I feel like they were in different different corners of, of musical genres. I'm figuring it out, and I think that right. it's like good. Uh, I don't want to say stepping stones, but it's like, oh, okay, well, we can throw that axe all the way over there, right. uh, <laughs> and so let's try throwing another one over there, see yeah. if it see if it hits the target. Yeah, I think now we can take from them in a more uh, nuanced way. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
That's kind of what I like, though, is that every, yeah, what I noticed about each of your songs is that they each have their own sound, but they're all kind of loosely held together by like that kind of grimy, not bluesy, mm-hmm. but kind of like groovy mm-hmm. um, vibe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I like it. That's anybody that I us. Anybody that I talked to you, uh, like about you guys, because you know, for this we had to do a lot of research because you know we didn't we didn't really necessarily know you, about you guys sure. until somebody brought it up. Um, but everybody that I know says that a lot of the power from you guys come from your lyrics, and it's a Whoa. lot of, like <laughs> <laughs> like it's the storytelling that people like, you know, cool. like, the, right they they enjoy that, and like. Uh, the, they like the they like the sound too, you know. They all I, the first thing that always comes up is Tool. I'm sorry, but That's great. yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's just one of, it's just one of those things. So, um, I think it, to, to me, it, like Tool is like such a visceral band. Oh yeah, and they're just like I never get bored of the riffs. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always when, catchy. They're always, always catchy. Always when they catchy. lock it in, it just like locks in. Despite being in like seventeen, sixteen, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how do they like, made how they made nine eight groove? I don't, it's <laughs> like, okay. Nice. I don't Fuck know. The rules. It's just like <laughs> yeah. Fuck the rules, man. Yeah. Right. And so I think from I forget when I started listening to them, like high school or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it just. I don't know how that melted through everything because there are other bands that I consider myself more a fan of and like that I feel uh, have more influence on my writing. But Tool becomes is more prevalent than like a lot of yeah. other bands I hear. Whenever I, like we get to the point in the writing process that a, a song is like kind of dragging on, it seems, or it's kind of been like a problem child, and then we like wind up rewriting so many parts of it, and just like we're writing the shit out of this song right now, like yeah. we're beating this horse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just like, I imagine in some way that's how Tool has to feel when they craft songs that are that complex. I, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, considering that all their fucking songs got leaked, I'm sure that was the biggest like slap in the fucking face because oh, wow. you know like. What's that? Didn't didn't their like whole album get uh, leaked at some point in their, the past couple years? Their new yeah, one, I know. yeah, I don't I don't know. Know. I, that's I, I read that somewhere. I don't know if that was like a clickbait article or not, but it was, I'm, I'm was deliberately that, like, unplugged from all of Tool's social media. Yeah, I, I would, I would be too. <laughs> I'm sick of waiting. <laughs> it's, it's, like, like, it's been twelve years. Is it's the like the death metal. Mo- yeah, dude, it's like the death metal fans with that Necrophages album. It's like it's been. 13 years since they came out yeah, with that Yeah, don't hold your fucking breath. Yeah, don't hold your fucking breath. <laughs> right. You know, I'm on the edge of my seat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever see that video, just just since we're on the topic yeah, of tool? Yeah. Did you guys did you guys ever see that video of Maynard uh, like hip flipping that dude at the concert? No. He he like No. Yeah, he like uh some dude went up on stage while he was singing sober and uh he went to give Maynard a hug and Maynard's like, "Yeah, man, give me a hug." And then he just fucking Body flips him like because you know he does all that judo shit. So, like, so he like he right. fucking he fucking he hip flips him and then like puts him in a fucking headlock and still singing the song like perfect <laughs> like, like perfectly oh. singing the song. So you know he's got him in the headlock and then at some point he like. You know, the kid's just like, yeah, and he was talking about it on Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan was just like, can you imagine what this kid is thinking right now? And she, fucking Maynard's like, oh, I'm going to have a tool baby. I'm going to paint him blue. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys got a new, uh, got a show coming up. Oh, man. Right? Uh, yeah. Friday? Uh, yeah, March next 20, Friday. March 29th at Friday. the Chameleon Club. Who are you guys playing with? We're playing with uh, another Baltimore a band called Ignite the Fire. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Never played with them before, so I'm. I've heard of them. I don't know how we missed that playing down here as much as we did. Yeah. I think they're Hagerstown area. Oh, okay, or Frederick, something like that. Gotcha. So maybe yeah, kind yeah, of didn't hit that them. area. Uh, them and then another three other Lancaster local bands. So it'll be a it'll be a really good. Uh, Stack local lineup. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. That's that's dope, man. Like, <laughs> Their shows have been great for I us. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a shout out on that next show. If you guys, uh, we're gonna this is gonna be up before that show, so that's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's you know in the fucking Lancaster area, check, area, excuse me, check out the Chameleon Club. That's gonna be dope. Yeah, we'll get you drunk. Uh, <laughs> so, um, when did you guys form? Two thousand twelve. 
twelve? Yeah, on your yeah. Facebook it said the Facebook was created in twenty twelve anyway. Yeah, or it so. says that it that it, that you guys formed we, created twenty twelve. We whatever. formed it's about more. six months before we created the Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because we didn't really have any material. <laughs> so you kind of like uh, brought the band together. Whose idea was it? How how did it? Uh, what was the genesis? Was well, it's it was weird. I I knew Nick from a mutual friend. We met when we were like fifteen, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I lived up sorry. near uh, Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, and so he lived near Lebanon, PA, and so it was like this weird. I came down to this summer in this music summer camp, and that's how I met the mutual friend, and. From that point on, like I knew, like I want, I wanted to be in a band with this guy. Yes, yeah. so we played a Pearl Jam song, and I was like, like I knew <laughs> from he's literally like, "Hi, nice to meet you." He's hand, he, I've got sticks in my hand. He has a guitar. We're just like, let's fucking, you know, what songs do you know? <laughs> play that was like me and right him. There. Only we did. Yeah. I want to fuck a dog in the ass by Blink One Eighty Two. That's love. And then. Yeah. <laughs> Something. At the time, I was at the time I was a little juggalo kid, so I. Uh, oh. I never, yeah. yeah and Isn't I, it I, cute? I, I really it's really actually, nice to meet someone that's coming out on the other side. Yeah, yeah it, it happens. You man. turned out okay. Yeah. Thank you. I just put okay. everything in, everything that from horrorcore went into death metal, so it's all good. That's fair. <laughs> so um. But no, we'll continue. You guys yeah, yeah, back yeah. to the uh, mutual friend. Right. That's how I met Nick. Um, and then a couple years passed, um, and there was this. That thing that Ty was involved in. That, oh yeah, that tried to happen. But anyway, uh, Nick wound up going to my hometown for college, basically, mm-hmm. and then said, hey, "I got a dude." And he called me one day and just said, "Do you want to try this out?" And then within a few weeks, we're just like, "We are doing this, and we like this." And it was it's good. Just kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, and try to learn how to write songs as fast as I could because <laughs> I didn't know. It, through so, this band is like how I I learned how to do things. And, like this is my first like professional band, but at first it was just like yeah, it's a band that I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then from like going from that point to like learning how um, how to make it a, a thing, like a, a start to make it a business, right. is like this is. This whole thing's like a lot of trial and error, <laughs> and it's it's it feels like such a long process because it's just like learning on the job, and it's like I feel like I've been doing this for so long. But right. in the I don't know, in the grand scheme of things, it's just like you got to learn somewhere. And you're and doing th- and you're doing what you love. You're doing yeah. you're shit you're proud of, you know. And that, yeah. that's really what it ma- what matters. There are so many people who ask in interviews on like people who have really gone far with their work, be like, oh, so what's What's your advice on anybody coming up? And there's this this sea of advice on anybody who's in our position uh, on like how would you make your band successful? And it's uh, there's so much advice; it's almost all useless. Mm. It's it's been so difficult <laughs> to, to to weed out the good and bad advice. It's, That's a good point. Uh, it, so, in some ways, you feel like you're like the most supported person because like you could ask anybody on what they think of what you should do next, and then you go to do it. I feel like an infant. Like yeah, <laughs> the market changes. Like it's so hard to navigate too, because everything's so, you know, constantly changing. Like uh, it's not back in the days where you used to pass out your CDs and get the word out that way and post up flyers now you necessarily. Got the it's like the internet, you got so much that has to be done, and you got to know what websites the are the most popular and where to go. Like mm-hmm. Facebook is kind of waning now. Like if we, like, like if we didn't know that YouTube was like the best place for podcasts, mm-hmm. we'd be somewhere else. It's not like, really even the best place for podcasts. Not anymore, no. Yeah, like a lot of uh, a lot of people are getting taken down and all that kind of stuff. Like the algorithms are really fucky. Yeah. Right. I mean, some people deserve to get taken down. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fuck uh, you too. Well, hey, you fuck know. you. <laughs> hey. Fuck I you fuck too. you, buddy. <laughs> you fucking dude. You fucking buddy. Hey. I'll hey, slap get you, buddy. Here. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> fuck you, buddy. Jesus. Buddy, fuck, fuck you. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> no. Anyway. <laughs> I fuck you, buddy. Oh. Yeah, the market's changing. Everything's weird and everything kind of sucks a little bit. But you know what? We get by. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make mm-hmm. do. So I was... Well, go, go ahead. Get, 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 no, no, you no, first. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got to put our camera on. <laughs> I got to put the camera on. All right. All right. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the Dead Sessions. Oh, yeah. Because okay. I watched those, and they were fucking awesome. 
One of the things I really love about those kind of videos is that people don't have the fucking excuse to say, I don't like them on the studio stuff. Mm -hmm. But you might like them live. So they can go and watch this video good and produce like it would be live. Mm -hmm. I loved that video. Awesome. Uh, They were fucking (laughs) awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, What was it like doing that? Where did you guys do that? Who was doing it? You know, like I, I didn't really look into the company, I guess, that sure. did the uh, video. Well, we should mention for the if, session. If, if nobody knows this, who might be listening, uh, Cooge engineered and mixed and mastered everything. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed awesome. his name was pretty much next to everything. So, yeah. 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 So, well, what, what kind of equipment do you use? Like, you got your own setup, <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, I've got my place up in uh, Palmyra, right by Hershey, called Seventh Wave Studio. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing it full time for pretty much since out of college. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I've been working with Pear Dry ever since then. Um, it's, it's a, it's a nice little private space. It's, it's a lot of, uh, my own personal gear choices that I like to have. And, uh, I get to work with a lot of really cool clients from, uh, I think we've done about half the states and six countries. Like That's it's, it's, it's a really, ex- it's what I wanted to do when I was in college and here I am struggling doing it, but I love it. That's yeah. all. <laughs> That's what the grind's all about. Yeah. And the musical grind's a hard one. It's yeah. an easy one to give up. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Kudos. I don't even know if I like it anymore, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a hard, f- it's a struggle, man. It's like, it's like, it's a hard I don't for do a it because it's fine. Like, I don't know. Like, if I don't do it, like, it'll kill me. Yeah. So, I'm, like, here I am. I'm just slave to this fucking creative process. Truth. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. You got to have something to yeah. vent, right? It's a passion yeah, project yeah. at that point. I tell myself I'm at the point now where I've honed my skills to a masterful level enough of a point that I can't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. I haven't, ha- I I've that. never worked food service. I've never worked retail. I've I, there's a lot of things also, I've done you weird jobs. Else at this point, you'd forget how to wipe yourself or something. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm at capacity with the brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't learn anything. You'd be sitting there with a mouthful of mashed potatoes. <laughs> how do I swallow? How do I swallow? <laughs> <laughs> Spit it out! Spit it out! <laughs> you, got your dick in, you got your dick in your hand in the bathroom, like I forgot how to pee! What do I do with it? The is too hard. Shit. Got dick stuck in fan. <laughs> how many times do I shake? <laughs> so what's your favorite like piece of equipment like in general like in your arsenal what's your like either pr- software or equipment uh, a particular piece of equipment or a type of equipment I'd say type uh, preamp hands down preamp. Um, it doesn't matter what else is in your signal path and there's going to be a lot of people that might argue this with me but um, when it comes down to actually getting tone and sound everything in my chain it comes down to the preamp I pick and what I'm putting it in front of I mean a good preamp paired with a good mic you're set um, but at that point, I get a lot of my saturation, a lot of my tone, and a lot of what I sound like as a producer mm-hmm. through driving my preamp. And I have uh, a, quite a selection of different preamps that I use. Um, probably one of my favorites is either uh, Shadow Hills Monogamma, mm-hmm. which is just an insane piece of equipment with uh, three different types of inputs. You can have like steel or nickel. Um, or a discrete option, which completely changes the tone. Or um, I have the... Uh, Chandler LTD1 channel strip preamp, which is essentially Ooh. like a, a classic Neve. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, you put that on snare. Usually that's what I put on your mm-hmm. snare. And I'm able that's to hot. pull in the lows, put in the crack, and add some air on top. And like, that's, that is your snare. Dude, you know, <laughs> what's, that funny? Neve? You know what's funny as shit is my number one thought, like, okay, so I always do the road test whenever I have, whenever we have a band that's on, and that's where I, I get any material I can find by the band and put it on in my car at full volume, and if I can blare that shit and rock out to it, then it's good stuff. So the number one thing while, that I was like, while I was listening to, I was like, fuck, yeah, this is good shit. Damn, that's a clean snare. <laughs> what? Like the rest of the drums are good, you know. It's got like its own quality, but that what the fuck? The snare just kind of like it's jumps that, out at yeah, you. Yeah, it's got that. Bass. People approach me after gigs, <laughs> looking at me like my cock's out or something. Like that. <laughs> They're just like, who gave you the right? To have that snare drum. And that's just like, <laughs> for what? For like, you know, the fucking right, right arm that's just this big while the rest of your body, the little manly boy got some big right arm. Snare. It's gonna hit the snare really hard. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> And what's lucky for Trevor is, like, he's got such a great wrist on a snare. Like, hands down, one of my favorite uh, drummer snares. It's sounds. about that pop. And, like, my second favorite instrument after bass is snare. 
Mm. Uh, I have quite a few. Like uh, we used uh, Woodland Percussions uh, Black Lodge mm-hmm. on most of the record, of it, which yeah. was a custom uh, snare built for us. And now you're rocking one of his kits, right? Yeah. So we, yeah, you just you told me you're just like oh, I know this dude who makes drums in a I don't want to say yeah unusual way, or yeah, a common way, and uh, yeah, used that on most of the record. Then. A year and a half later, I bought a drum set off. <laughs> and people still come up to me after shows and be like, well, tell me everything about that. I'm just like, mm-hmm. happily, I'd love to. It's <laughs> you you, you got to build up that snare as a meme on its own, and then one day come out and fuck with people with like this tiny little piccolo snares. That sounds like something I would do. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, fucking, have you ever slapped your wood on a nice black beauty? Yes. Those are such... I think <laughs> you have. I have. Which, <laughs> which context are you saying? Sir? Now I'm confused. <laughs> yes, in every context. Um, Whatever you're thinking about, yes. <laughs> All joking aside, <laughs> we did use that on a couple songs on the record. As yeah. Well. You know, at first I didn't know how that was going to come out until I said, "Yeah, maybe." I'm I sorry. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I love, dude. Black just because the conversation would have made a left turn that dude, abruptly, exactly. we, might, exactly. we might get there. Dude, Black Beauty snares are one of my favorites. Like right. they, they, they have fat fucking sound. They what do. we got now, AJ? What's, what's the next? What, what we got next? Well, one thing that I did want to ask was, uh, I noticed uh, what. Uh, what guitar was used in the Oculus uh, music video? Uh, is it like a Jaguar? Yeah, it was a Fender Jaguar. Jag, it, it, nice. uh, was the it's the Kirk Cobain signature mm-hmm. that I've yeah, wanted shit. since I was in middle school, and he I, plays the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> It found it on Craigslist for like eight hundred bucks, and I was like, "This is Craigslist." Craigslist. Craigslist. Wow, Craigslist. Nice. And yeah. it works. It works. And it's not a bomb. You, you yeah, it's <laughs> not a bomb. Right. Well, I mean, maybe, you be. maybe you haven't hit the right notes. <laughs> <laughs> what tuning are you in? Uh, Which song? Uh, for what song? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might be closer to <laughs> experimental. Experimental. <laughs> Until one day it blows. Uh, I found this guitar tuning the other day. It was uh, I forget what the fuck it's called. It's an Irish tuning, but every string is D. Just D D D D D. So you just get like all the harmonic frequencies like Fucking going right up. D. 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 Yeah. That's that's <laughs> awesome, dude. That should be a tenacious D album, dude. This D, the, the harmonic D. Yeah. Written oh completely and entirely in that one tune. There's a, Jack Black, if you're listening right now. Uh, <laughs> there's a band called Americas that came by Lancaster a while back, and their tunings were nuts. Like, different for every song, but like it was A-A-E, A-A-E, or something like that. And it's just like, what nice. the hell are you doing there? <laughs> but they were, they were one of the most memorable acts I've like ever seen. Like, And you play with a lot of these kind of bizarre tunings that are... Yeah, well, well, actually, no. Not as bizarre as a lot of people. Yeah. No, I'm pretty conservative as far as tunings go, but at the I same only have time. To tune once. I, yeah, I, I throw my. Nick saying that means he tunes all over the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> I throw my E string, like, all around. <laughs> Okay. It it goes uh, like you know you have your classic drop drop D then I'll throw it down to C then I'll throw it down down to B and then right the whole back guitar out. or just that one string just the one string one string oh, nice. yeah the intonation doesn't it doesn't like it it's a yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, it imagine. Like it. But I don't, I don't have enough money to get another guitar for what? every one of my tunings. That's just, and it's a pain in the ass to carry yeah. around. It's not the punk rock thing to do anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. The equivalent would be like me, like washing my drum set in the bathtub and hoping they're still the same shape after. The yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm so they pissed off. Cold. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> Holy shit! I was so <laughs> upset when uh, Guitar Center stopped selling that uh, neon pink uh, Hello Kitty Hello Kitty, Kitty Squire. Dude, yeah, because then you could just get like one or two of those in every different color and use those for the fucked up weird tunings. Because like, I, I just right color by there. tuning. Dude, color wanted, by tuning. Yes. <laughs> we wanted to take one of those fucking things and put an EMG in it. Yeah, drop it down to like A. Yeah, just drop it down to like G flat. Use that bitch for like gent. Yeah. Does it gent? It might. 
<laughs> so, well, what are what are the uh, other pieces of equipment that get used here? Like, what are what are uh, what are some of the bases and, and drum brands here? Uh, I'm a, I'm endorsed by Spectre Bases, so I've been playing them for about four years, I think, by this point. That's fucking awesome. Spectres, um, a great Spectres are like one of my yeah. favorite brands. Next, to what model do you team. use? Uh, typically, in this band, I use a uh, Euro Five LX. Okay. Um, I also sometimes use a Euro Six LX. Um, and uh, actually, for an acoustic show that we played, I played their Timber, which is their acoustic electric series. Ooh, which I, that? Oh, it's oh, fucking that gorgeous. Okay. It's one of my. F- if you want something that still acoustically has a little bit of growl to it, that's the one to play. Oh, fuck. Like I played Martins, and they're pretty, but like I'm ki- I'm pretty and kind of pissed off too. So yeah, that's why yeah. I play Spectre. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. On, like uh, fretless stuff. Um, you know I. Um, at OVC, uh, where I went to college, I was a bass major and I played, I played contrabass as well. So like, I, I like fretless. There's just, I don't know. I, I took an old Squire. I had like my very first bass, took the frets off of it, did a Jacko thing and just put wood putty in it and like sanded it down nice. and just like made one. Um, but when I was, when I was sanding it, I sanded down a little too far, uh, that I actually saw a trust rod coming through it, but I still played it cause I didn't know any better. Um, but like. I've I've played a lot of fretless between upright bass or a little bit of like electric, but it's it's a lot of fun. It takes a lot of concentration, and you know it works for certain genres. That's for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, other equipment. So uh, yeah, the the Fender. Oh, also, what, what bass cab do you use, by the way? What what cab? <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's, uh, that's one half that's the important. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck does it come through though? Uh, it's a it's a piece together um rig. Um, I have a vintage Sun Solaris head that I picked up from a shop in Le Moyne, um, called Full Custom Repair. It's a vintage sun head that was sitting in a shop for about 15-ish years. Someone dropped it off and never picked it up. I just had to pay him to fix it, and I got it for free. Nice. Yeah. Um, And I've got that running into... Who um, (laughs) Who fucking does that? I know, right? Uh, Well, he blew all the caps out of it, so it needed like a whole new power unit, and all the caps were placed in it. You just like kept hitting the fuse back in till it burnt every one out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then I I play out of a Sun 212 that I picked up from Craters up in Jonestown um, for a stupid good price, but that's also a vintage Sun Cab. Okay. So yeah, Fender Jaguar. Uh, (laughs) I also play a a PV Horizon 2. Okay. How do you Uh, like the PV? I like it. Okay. It's 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 disturbed. It's angry. It doesn't. It doesn't like. like That's a good <laughs> definition. It's got these old like blade pickups in it, and it's just like it doesn't. I don't know. It's old and it's grumpy. It doesn't like a lot of people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> So there's that. Like Nick. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the best yeah. description for guitar tone I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, I have a Gibson Vixen that I've been playing Ooh, for quite a long time Gibson that I've Vixen. busted the headstock on it three times. And now, it, it happened the third time. I was like, mm, it's done. It's going to sit over there for now. Yeah, it's a bummer, but... Hey, you know, it, it was through weird. some shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Plus as in cheating. me yeah. stepping on a cord and it goes... <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's like, man. Doesn't it usually just fall out of your car or something like this? Yeah, it's not. It's Rock not. Roll. It's not impressive. It's just. Oh man. A bummer. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, gonna sit over there for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm running that through a uh, Mesa dual rectifier that I got off Craigslist. Ooh, Mesa. Oh my god. Yeah. I love those dual um, rects, dude. Uh, yeah. It's louder than I could ever need it to be. Um, and then I you say that now. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I have yet to find a venue where it's like, yeah, just turn that up a little more. Just keep going. Because <laughs> usually I like it taps out at nine o'clock, and they're all like, turn it down. Turn it down. Gotta turn that shit down. Go shit. So there's that, and then I'm running it through uh, an orange close back close back two by twelve. Nice. Um, it's the orange. black orange because yeah. I don't like the orange orange. Mm. Yeah. And then I replace one of the spe- it comes with uh, vintage two vintage thirties in it, and I replace one of the vintage thirties with um, what the fuck's it called? Uh, A hemp something. It has to do something with weed. <laughs> <laughs> hemp field hemp. 
I'm uh, sure. No, those are all, those are schools. <laughs> uh, I want to say the Hemperer, but that's a beer. Um, Hemp Temple. Hemp Temple. <laughs> Shout out to our friends in Hemp Temple. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll look it. Uh, I'll look it up in a minute and try to find it. But I put one of those in there, and yeah, that's right. that's it. Yeah. Do you use well, any uh, foot pedals or anything? Yes, sir. What kind of foot <laughs> 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 pedals? You got? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> um, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> uh, what's the uh, main, yes, what's sorry, like no. the main two or three that you use? Or five, or ten, or nineteen, or twenty. Um, I've been all right, so I've been using a lot of. I was recently endorsed by Mojo Hand Effects. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so I'm using uh, their Rook Overdrive pedal. Uh, Mojo well, makes some pretty dope shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're really great. I found them through uh, looking at Dustin Kentru's board from Thrice, and right. he has like three of them stacked on each other. So I was just like. Ouch. Yeah, and they're great. <laughs> that ant must be screaming, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there's that. There's um, a Rotosphere Mark II from uh, Houston Kettner, uh, a Weeping Demon wah pedal from Ibanez, nice. um, the Delay pedal, the Carbon Copy from mm-hmm. MXR. Yeah. MXR. Um, You've got the original, not the deluxe, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, original. original. Yeah. Uh, and then I just replaced my whammy pedal with the Digitech Ricochet, which is just the smaller version of the whammy pedal because that the footprint on that thing is too big. <laughs> um, and I don't, I have too many big pedals, and I just don't. <laughs> it, so that needed to go. Um, you just got like a circle of pedals. A little, uh, you know. Not, not really. Quite up to like Mike Einziger level. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I, I How had many total do you use? Uh, well, then I just got a reverb pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. I got Good a answer. reverb pedal. <laughs> um, <laughs> called the Dark Star from Old Blood Noise Endeavors. And. Give me like another one called the Dark Lord. <laughs> the Edge Lord. The Edge Lord. They should make. They should. Okay, the brand should be Neck, neck Beard. And the fucking pedal should be called the Edge Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? The it would be a beard. fucking. The uh, shittiest <laughs> treble. Yo, it'd be a fuzz booster. pedal. It'd be a fuzz pedal. It'd be pedal. a fuzz pedal. Yeah, yeah fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fuzz, it's a a fuzz, fuzz pedal called the neck. Beard. Yeah, it's a fuzz pedal called the neck beard because all they can get is like the, the spot, classic neck spot. fuzz. It's classic the, neck fuzz. the, the beard. The beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, so that that's what I got going on. <laughs> Does it turn? Oh, and a tuner pedal because you should get the turd fuzz. That pedal. counts. That counts as a pedal. Yeah. They have a turd fuzz pedal. You should, you should oh, they do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a turd that is a emoticon. Pedal. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even an emoticon. It's just it a actually looks like a pile of do. Yeah. It's an old uh, what it, 70, 60s? It's, a, it's like a sixties pedal. Yeah. It's like a sixties fuzz pedal. Is it like a wow. rubber top and you just hit like it's so it just yeah. It, it's literally, it's, it's, literally yeah. it's it's a little pile. button at the top that when you press down it just sinks into the poop. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely showed you that. I gotta show you. I think you have. (laughs) Whatever next. Oh Oh my god. Because I found it after I finished Deep Alive. I sent it out to you, and then <laughs> Jamie was like, "We got to redo all of the guitar <laughs> bands now." Oh, man, I remember that. Episode. And that that means something because all that kid uses a Sans amp. <laughs> oh no! So drums, drums. Um, <coughs> I got that Woodland Percussion Cape almost two years ago now. There you go. Built to my specs. I absolutely adore it. Um, oh, so it's stave style drums, so rather than <laughs> you know plied sort of. Cylinders. It's uh, it's like a twenty sided polygon that he wood glues together and then puts on a lathe and then sands it into a Ooh. circle. Um, as a result, uh, the snare is three quarters of an inch thick and weighs more than my car. And, <laughs> uh, the toms, I can't remember what, but the, the rest of the drums are five eighths or half an inch thick, so they're they're heavy and they're the toms and, and kick are oak, which doesn't help the whole weight issue. Um, True. And my snare is actually made of pine, uh, which is, you know, some people ask me why it's the sort of natural oiled finish on the snare, because that's really all you can do to pine, because pine, like, will excrete sap for 300 years after it's cut down. So, um, 
you could put something on it and it would just worm its way out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. Man. Um, so yeah, oak drums, woodland stuff. I'm probably never going back. It's, Is there it any sounds so amazing reason for the preference for like heavier stuff? You know, I I like that I know the guy who made it. Okay, that that means something to me. Um, he's also just a sweet dude. Okay, and mm. everything that he does is top notch quality. It's this is you know, uh, it, it just feels it looks like a hand built. Uh, it's kind of labor of love, and so the the goal is as more funds come along is to just grow out this drum set and make it into a make it into a monster. But other than that, just you know. Promark drumsticks and uh, Zildjian cymbals, typically. Are there any other bands, do you know, that are running around with uh, equipment that was made by the person that made your drum? Um, I met one dude at a show a couple Yeah, weeks ago he, he had a snare. He also had a woodland snare, and I was just like, no fucking way. That's so cool. My drum set is like serial number two. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so there's not a ton of stuff. He does have a drum shop in... Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Avondale? Avondale. Yeah. Near Delaware. So, yeah. 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 Um, so everybody should definitely go buy his shit because it's amazing. And he's mm-hmm. also in Dales. He is in Dales. Yeah. So he'll find a shop in Harrisburg. We'll yeah. finally for him put him up on this video here. Definitely do. Okay. Uh, the, the name of this speaker is called the Cannabis Rex. <laughs> that nice. is awesome. That was so worth the wait. <laughs> 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 it actually that's was. Almost, <laughs> that's almost as good as the Krankenstein. Oh, oh yeah. shit, dude. Holy shit. That's what, uh... Go, 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 go. <laughs> ben Giles has. He, it, yeah. He, he reformatted his Mason into a Krakenstein. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So, y'all have uh, three albums out. Um, what, the Black Sun EP, In Threes, and Deep Alive? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, um, why don't you go over some of like the inspirations for each of those? Like, uh, what's the general story that they kind of tell? They like the Black the Sun EP. What's what's the theme for that one? Uh, Black the Sun EP was our just try out a first release. Yeah, the um, first seven songs, eight songs we wrote. There's only six on the record, but we yeah. dropped a couple out. But. Yeah. Um, the story with that one is that. Uh, we were asked to be a part of this like recording seminar, oh, yeah. and uh, and so we yeah they were going to record us, and the guy running the session was going to teach uh, what he was doing. Uh, but kind of after we were done, it was like not great. <laughs> Uh, as in recording, it's just like uh, the dude taped like all the symbols underneath, and like he was an old guy too, like an old guy as in he like had done a lot of like more classic records. You've heard some stuff he's done, yeah. yeah. I think I think for the class he was more so just demonstrating all sorts of things that he had, not necessarily what was best for our sound, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but there was some things that were like. The overheads were over six dB off of each other in RMS signal. Like that's exactly. drastically yeah. wrong. Uh, so it probably is. I imagine he just didn't go over that in the class. But yeah, yeah. So Cooge spent like months on it, and <laughs> uh, and it sounded like the way it sounds now. It's pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah. It sounded a lot better than what it did before. So each song is kind of tells a different story. They're not really uh, connected by. Any one thing in particular? There was a lot of time, you know, that was probably two years of, yeah. of writing and rewriting, you know, the songs. A lot of those songs are in like their fourth form um, just because we were, we were learning how to write songs, basically. Mm-hmm. Hey, Trey, um, would you mind moving your microphone up a little bit? Like, not like I'll uh, pull it towards you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me get you a little bit more on the mic. Continue. Sorry, I'm like leaning back now, so I probably like moved. No, no, it's fine. So by the end of it, we'll all just be like, yeah, oh, everybody's oh, pretty much dude. chill. Oh my god, <laughs> it's all that, it's that butt pussy you gave me. Hey, hey. ooh, <laughs> call back. We are oh. medicated. Oh man, I don't have my soundboard up. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I don't have my soundboard up. Womp, womp. All right, continue. I don't even have the soundboard to do the womp womp. Fuck. Yeah, I don't even have the womp womp. I am my own soundboard. I am my own womp womp. <laughs> I am womp womp. I, I used to have one on my phone Wamba. that was just like the hip hop air horn. <laughs> I had that for a while, but I dropped it because I fucking ate that sound. <laughs> um, so, CBS bangers. Or something. <laughs> um, before Black the Sun, um, the fuck. 
Okay, stop. <laughs> well, okay. Before Black of the Sun, um, was there any other like, songs that came before that that didn't necessarily make it? There's a couple. Yeah. Uh, there's. You wouldn't have missed them. It's a good thing that they're not on the record. Huh? Yeah. yeah. There was one song in particular that we, we played out twice or three times. I think only twice. And it was just like, nope. Nope, we're not going to even continue to write this one. It was one of those things like, can we get away with a chorus that sounds this mainstream? And we thought maybe, and then no, we can't. Uh, <laughs> no, it didn't work. We, we like a good hook, but this one was too far. It, yeah, it was all hook and no substance. Yeah. Best it, to avoid. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah we tried it. It was, it, it was, a, it was an experiment. Yeah. As you know, every song is. You know what would have pissed you off is if that would have became your number one hit. Oh, then, no, uh. Yeah. I mean, no, no, uh, no, yeah. That would have been your Smells Like Teen Spirit. True. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the farthest away I can get from music at that point? Right. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So then, uh, the next release in threes was basically just a rework of some of the songs off of the Black the Sun EP, and then with two new songs that we didn't release, uh, which was Let Blanket and Giants, mm. which could have been on the first EP, but they were not ready. But they did make it on the second. Yeah, in yeah. like a and form that the, was not. Like, yeah, record. Oh, yeah, so yeah, this, yeah, it's this weird like overlap record. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also our way of like test driving Seventh Wave Studio from the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, because we yeah. before we spent oh, like talking about butt pussy. Gotta oh work. My <laughs> God, is that Nick Kroll? It was. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was a big mouth quote. Oh, it's about uh, yeah, it sounded like Nick Kroll yeah. as um the fucking lady. The fuck, what's her name? Oh, let's talk about book. Uh, what the fuck was it? <laughs> What's her name? Lola. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Look. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I hate so much. I hate so much you came in your pants. <laughs> You're gonna rub fronts. You're gonna rub fronts. <laughs> make, make thick and warm. <laughs> Yo, that fucking Why don't show. I have that <laughs> one, dude? Best. That, that's, that shows. I, that's a great show. What is this one? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> um, oh, it's. A yeah, big, we were watching yeah, a bunch of. Yeah, cop we were watching videos cop and, videos and we did it. <laughs> oh, fun. Yeah. Okay, continue. It's funny, like, have you. If you've gone back and, like, watched episodes of Cops, you know, that aired, you know, in the late 90s, and you're just like, this is propaganda. Oh, yeah. This is insane. Yeah. 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 And G4 played that for months. Mm-hmm. They had, like, one slot for the show. what TV was? Yeah. yeah. That was just, like, Girls Gone Wild ads yeah. from, like, midnight to 5 a.m., yep. and yeah. then just Cops. And they had, they had <laughs> all that Two of the every, best things all television needs. And, and, like, every now and again, they had, like, The Man Show, or, like, mm-hmm. A Thousand mm-hmm. Ways to Die. That was a classic. Was a, yeah, yeah. Whatever. American Ninja Warrior was mm-hmm. on there. No, Ninja Maximum Ninja Exposure, Ninja. which was the that one was where it was the, um... It, it was like the the Asian variant of American Ninja Warrior, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. where they just do all this crazy shit, but then they would like voice dub over it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You mean you're, so you're it'd be like a Ninja dude Warrior who's saying together. something, and then just an American saying, "I'm a small dick over here." Like, it's, it's, it's like <laughs> that's what it was. I was just like, "This is insane." <laughs> <laughs> the humor from the '90s was so, so fucking fuck. weird. Like my my nephew was watching fucking Billy Madison the other day, and I was watching it with him. And I was like, "This movie is bad." <laughs> <laughs> like, why the fuck was I like? I think the only funny part of that entire movie was the penguin parts. I've never actually only, seen it. It was so. Are bad. you really? serious? Yeah, I, I love saying this to people. <laughs> never seen it. Jam, jam, jam. Yeah. Have you seen? Uh, have you seen Little Nicky? No. Yeah, that's a stable. <laughs> little Nicky's a stable. If you don't oh, yeah. fuck Billy Madison, yeah, you gotta watch it. <laughs> right. So good. We're happy Gilmore. Happy T- Gilmore. Tie me down. I haven't seen that either. It's about demons and shit. It's pretty. I think cool. Adam, because Adam Sandler is just awful. Little Nicky plays yeah. this uh, demon sure, yeah. that's like in the face with a fucking shovel. It's like sure. <laughs> that's before my brother Cassius hit me in the face with a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> That's me now. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Get in the flask. Oh my god, dude. Anyway, back to so, you. um, <laughs> your second album, um, in threes, was there any, like, uh, theme? I know you said that, like, it's all a general progression into, like, the uh, third album that was kind of the encapsulation and mm-hmm. addition of more, but did anything kind of start coming together as a general theme, or was that not until, like, 
after the fact of like Deep Alive and all that kind of stuff. I think it started to more establish our, our sound. It's really interesting. Like, uh, you know, bands typically don't release an acoustic EP as their second record, uh, if you can even call it that, because they're both EPs. So um, there was there's a thousand reasons for doing it. Basically, by default, we got asked to do some acoustic gigs because not everybody's down with the onslaught that is our loud show. So. <laughs> So we did some of that, but then to make the songs work, we basically had to rewrite a lot of them to make them fit the acoustic thing. And we thought, well, with all the work that we put into this, and we're really proud of the song. Um, and also, on a more kind of clerical standpoint, we wanted to do a, an entire record at Seventh Wave, and that was a really good way to to spend a few, like a weekend, basically, mm. and get closer to to Tyler and and Jason. So that all really worked. And it was also like partly a necessity because the, the full length was taking so fucking long for us to actually get enough songs to write and be happy enough with them uh, that it had been a while since we had released anything. And we're just like, we're just trying to not do radio silence. So we're just like, put it out. And it just worked out. It's like one of my favorite things mm-hmm. that we put. So, um, I still use tracks off of that as reference tracks for other projects. That, that, it's, it's probably our best sounding record. <laughs> That's the thing. I hand people this stuff at shows, and it's like there's no production to it at all. It's in a white CD packet, and sometimes we draw on it, but usually not. And we just hand them out to people, and they're like, this is probably our best sounding album. It's, one that looks, it's got like Memorex on the top of it or something. Um, but yeah, go figure. You know what's a really good marketing scheme that I've seen a lot of bands do nowadays? Is like uh, they put their stuff on. Uh, little teeny tiny flash drives, like little like one gig flash drives or whatever the hell, and uh, they'll be like, you know, they hand out their shit. They'll be like, you know what? Here, you can have have the flash drive by this. If you don't like it, you can delete our shit off of it and still use it. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we had a we had a workshop one time with this band, this thing. I bleep this because I don't know if we want this said, but uh, this thing called. They had this like battle the bands esque thing, mm-hmm. and before they started uh, our show, they went through this little workshop. It's got the like, yeah, man, we're gonna teach you how to market and stuff. It was such it was a so bad bullshit. But the only bullshit, bullshit. The, the only thing that he said that was smart was that USB drive thing, and then net. Sure enough, the next year everybody's doing that. Everybody's got at least one good idea. <laughs> A yeah, clock, and a knows. clock is right twice out of the day. Right. Everyone, <laughs> broken, broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Everyone I know has got these fucking flash drives that have bands written on them. Like, oh, cool. What, what, what is that? And they're like, yeah, I got this from a band a long time ago, but now I use it to keep all my like porn on. I don't know. Yeah. It's okay. The album is still on there, though. There's so There's much nice streaming thing. porn. I don't know why people download it anymore. Yeah. Do people do that? People download porn. There are people I know with like terabytes of porn. <laughs> Usually it's... Whoa! A- <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Who are these people? Oh yes, man, I could give names. I, I could give a whole list of names right now, but I won't. Dude, dude I had, I had a Do they do with... anything other than just like, is it just look for porn? Probably not. Is it just Cheetos and video games? <laughs> not to, well, not to pigeonhole. Actually, I know, I know who he's, ta- I know who he's talking about. And actually, one time when we were in high school, he, uh, he had these two flash drives, like, like a ter- like a fucking hard drive, right? And both of them were like three terabytes. Oh my God. He had two of them. So I said, he had one of them, was, he had talked about he had a bunch of anime on it. And I was like, dude, let me let me borrow that. So he had all these fucking animes and shit on. I was like, oh, that's cool. Did the so, title of like Boner Jams 07 not like put it off for him? <laughs> but the problem was, was that I got it at the end of the day when we were all trying to leave and he gave it to me in a hurry and he gave me his other flash drive mm-hmm. that had some fucked up shit on it. So like hentai? Hen- like, hunt- fucked up hentai, fucked up, like, BDSM shit. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm, I'm I'm sitting there seeing bitches get cut. I was like, what? What are you doing with that pool stick? Whoa! Wow. It was, it was disturbing. Wow, that cue ball had some mileage. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I feel like there's a sense of pride that comes with that archive. I, You're yeah, just like, it's like I can't yeah, I collected that. A lot of this doesn't exist anymore. You can't I don't find like this it. anywhere else. This is it's, discontinued. I'm a porn connoisseur. It's like, those, it's like the nasty, uh, or not nasty, but the, those bad smelling candles. That people get, uh huh, yeah, like that one. The one place we got that one at, the one where you guys smelled earlier, yeah. They had this one called Daddy. It was like a mi- <laughs> oh no, it was a mixture of uh, oh my god, it was a mixture of gasoline, <laughs> uh, gasoline, cheap cologne, leather, cigarette. and feet. <laughs> Jesus Christ, wow. it was bad, and people were buying it. I was like, what? The- 
like you know those like things that you can get uh, people sometimes send for Halloween or something like that. It's uh, these like gummy bears that like it's either sour apple or like booger flavored. Yeah, uh-huh. There's yeah, two of each, yeah. and you just like get to see who makes the face. I'm just like, do you want to try these? I'm just like, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> no. Look, Fuck I'm you for even asking. I like to live dangerously, man. I'll do it. <laughs> Every time they ask me, I know it's a 50 50 chance. I don't even care if it's a 70 40 chance. I'll fucking do it. That's a bad, bad ratio. <laughs> but you know, 70, 70, 70 40. I hope you don't gamble. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, don't, don't. I really feel like playing Russian roulette with gummy bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, way, way to take something fun and just shit all over <laughs> it. You know, it's fun as hell, though. Me, uh, we went over our uh, old vocalist house for... Uh, me and him were in this old like tech death band. We went over our vocalist house for... Uh, but not Thanksgiving, it was Halloween. Yeah. And the night before, he had this big-ass bowl filled with gummy bears, and he filled it with, like, three different kinds of alcohol and let the gummy bears soak it up. Oh, yeah. Mm. So the next day, we were just, like, down in gummy bears. like, eat four of those, like, taking a fucking shot. And, like, oh, midway through the night, we were bad. trashed. Oh, it was bad, dude. Yeah. I, at one point, I was just like... Argh! <laughs> That's amazing. Bad idea. Yeah, gel and then alcohol. We did the same. <laughs> yeah, we did the, the same. The last thing, thing they need to do is make booze easier to drink. Yes. And I swear to fucking god, there's this place that's like two blocks from my house that has <laughs> these liquor slushies. <laughs> oh, yes. just diabolical. Oh, no. And the thing is, th- this is how funny this place is. Um, you can get a twenty ounce for four dollars or a forty four for ten. So do the math yeah. on that one, but. <laughs> Uh, basically, they just put different stuff in it. In the there's a Swedish Fish Four loco flavored one. And it's four dollars, and it's twenty ounces, and it's fifteen percent. Oh boy, <laughs> bottle of sweet wine. wine right there. My God, exactly. <laughs> Moonshine, and, and they sell it out of the back door. Basically, it's a carry out. Put, it's a carry out, but ca- it's like <laughs> it's, it's a speak. A it's just out. a speak. Easy. No, they have I a sign in the front that's just like, yeah, go this way to get the slushies. <laughs> like, Meet the, Jim in the back. I swear slushies. to God, on Friday, <laughs> Ryan Schultz and I cream. went, Ryan, Ryan is my roommate, um, we went to this distributor that he was just like, man, when you when you find out there's a distributor here, you're going to be so pissed that you hadn't been going here all the time. It was on King and Marshall. It's okay. like across from the prison. Um, and you just go up there, and it's just a garage door that's open, and a <laughs> sign saying "Employees only beyond this point." Somebody has to let you in, and apparently they're, they're just like, "What do you want?" And you're supposed to say like, "I'll have a case of hams," and then they go and get it for you. <laughs> what the God? fuck, this dude? I promise. That's why that's not so awesome. on the color. There was a dude with like four teeth who came up and he's just like, I don't care, you go out and look around and he just like let us in and we just like had to look at this warehouse that I think like some they also like change oil back there or something. <laughs> That's fucking Fuck. sketchy. It was. Oh my god. Sign was, me up. Was it cheap? Yes. <laughs> hey. But but to be honest, we were looking for something like Goose Island IPA and literally all they had was just like Miller, Jenny. Like it was your highest quality beer was probably like something with premium written on it <laughs> <laughs> to give you some insight. We played, we played Moonshine D and D one time. Whoa, that was fun. Ooh, that it sounds was, dangerous. It was retarded. It was a bad idea. Yeah, but it was fun. <laughs> Usually, the bad ideas are the best. <laughs> What about, like, every time you got hit for so many points of damage? Well, basically, whenever somebody whenever somebody critical failed, they took a shot. Whenever somebody uh, took a, got a crit 20, uh-huh. they the, D, the DM took a shot. But the DM could make you take a shot for anything. That's... It was wow. a bad idea. Huh. It was a bad idea. I'm just, I'm just saying. It was a bad idea. It started off because the, our DM is a very, very, very reasonable dude. You know, he won't fuck us over if we, we play good. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, you know, four natural 20s in a row yeah. kind of fucked him up, and he got a little less merciful. And he's basically, he's basically like, either take the shot or you're falling down a fucking... Hit of spike. <laughs> okay, I guess. Fuck. Here we go. It was, bad, it was a bad idea, but it was fun. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, what's like your favorite song to play live? Each, I guess, each person's gonna have their own favorite. Yeah, so right we'll now, go it's around one. this way. Because oh no, no don't put me first. No, will, we're gonna do that to you. I will um, say that all the all the live videos that your face is in the camera. God, camera, God, camera. All the live videos that I've seen you guys play, uh, Blood Honey's probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I do like that. I, I like that song. Very good. I Thank don't you. like playing that one live as much. 
Really? Yeah. I like the song. I don't like playing it. Huh. Huh. Not even with the new solo you put in? A drum fill? Okay, I kind of like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a drummer, so I understand. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes you There's certain ones, like, same with, like, Dead Cellar. I love that song, but, like, as a drum piece, it's, like, kind of written for the... There's not a lot of interesting things, song, things going yeah. on, yeah. By the way... Also, it tires my right sodas now. and water right there if you guys want anything. Yeah, help you yourself. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and cookies. And cookies. We got... Uh, oh, I might yeah. hit up the cookies. Peanut butter cookies. Yeah, hit the cookies. cookies, man. Yeah. Bring them out. Bring them out. Here, you want to put this in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, Unleash. Thanks, Girl Scouts. Let the boys in. <laughs> yeah, what's your, what's your favorite song? Um, to play live is definitely the Pioneer now, which is a new one. People will hear pretty soon. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. Now, yeah. What do you like about that, that song? Is that a hint? Are we are we gonna be hearing some new stuff, guys? Fucking bet. Oh yeah. Soon enough. We said it out loud now, so now we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're obligated, right yeah. here. You heard verbal it here on the Total Punks, yeah. yeah. Verbal contract. <laughs> yeah. The the Pioneer is a fun one because I'm trying to, you know, trying to switch out the way that I that I write and be a little bit more adventurous. So much of my life growing up playing drums, I was playing stuff like Rush, which is extremely busy. So the whenever I started playing with other people, the first several years of that, all I all I heard was just like, You're too busy, you're too busy. And then I took some time and eventually a lot of what I was doing was paradry as well as like I would play for a musical orchestra pit so it was like much more simplified stuff and it's been like a lesson in like me having the balls to like get back out and actually play the shit out of my instrument which is what I used to do And but I just sort of like tried to dial it back to the point where it almost got boring so I'm just like fuck that shit you need to make like a little side project math core band well, it's funny, I, part of the reason uh, I, I joined uh, the other band that, uh, that Cooge is also in, where it's this, I don't know what you, it's just instrumental, loopy, groovy, weirdy. Jazzy, rocky, instrumental. Yeah, yeah it's kind of Floydy and, mm. yeah. Okay. But that's that's a different one where, like, the the drums are really part of the sort of melodic force in that band. So that's that's been helping me, like, jar my kind of instincts when it comes to, to writing drum parts and the Pioneer is one of the examples where I was trying to trying to break out of what would have been obvious I guess shows there's a lot of fills in that song <laughs> <laughs> it's a very balls out kind of I like how proud you are it's very it's a prideful thing yeah there's certain drum parts I'm not proud of that one I'm proud of <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite uh, I'll, so definitely the Pioneer one that would, that that one, okay. um, a little bit. It's on the riffy side that I truly enjoy. Um, I was listening to a lot of, a lot of Soundgarden as I usually do, but around this time in particular, it was like around the time Chris Cornell died mm-hmm. when. I was just like really digging in. This is it. Came, it came out. We both binged for about a, a year. Yeah, there was a solid melancholy year where pretty much ninety five percent of the music I could listen to at any given moment was his work. Yeah. yeah. So, but as far as things that are out that I really enjoyed playing, it's I really enjoyed playing in the mountain, mm-hmm. particularly okay. um, because that's, that's, a, that's a fun one too. Yeah. It's yeah. just like it's like two halves. It's like it, the beginning. The first half is just some chords, some little riff here and there, uh, but like it's pretty subdued. And then there's like a definite break in the song where it just like lets loose and just goes to town. Mm-hmm. And I, re- I really enjoy when that happens. The drop. The drop. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. At the end, it just like drops tempo and just goes a little drop? slower. Oh God. Space drop. We have a fucking sound clip of a bass drop. <laughs> and this one lasts like 14 seconds. Like, we're still in the bass fallout yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, it's good. We're done. There we go. Yeah, we're done. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy playing in the mountain. And yeah. I'll, uh, we've also been working on, like, set crafting a little mm-hmm. bit more. So 
how we have collections of songs that we'll play in order, which is not like we haven't we didn't really do that before. And we've talked about transitions between songs, and we're just like, yeah, this is kind of fun. It, like, it flows so much better. Now. <laughs> yeah. But the yeah, shows have improved a lot. Pioneer and, and the Mountain, are my favorites. That's what's okay. So I will also pick two, like you assholes, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think. Uh, playing wise what I enjoy playing and what I think is just like fun is actually Firefly mm. oh yeah you wrote the shit on that well that's Nick's also, like that's also a new one you will not believe your eyes I forget I forget how you um, how you approached us with it you were like I wrote a pop punk song kind of it was it was essentially that yeah, I'm also a real big Green Day fan. Hey, like right. I started lit like when I really started getting music it was Green Day, first and foremost. American Idiot. I was like, this is it. Yep. Wow. I, I would love to cover that I entire could die now. Yeah. Oh, I could have died in sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only person who really didn't mind like twenty one guns and all that kind of I stuff. I loved it. Like, yeah, I didn't nope. think it was a terrible nope. album. No, I, I didn't love it. Didn't so many people gave me <laughs> so much good. shit no, for still liking Green I didn't Day. listen to that record so much. But I mean, uh, American Idiot, I played the hell out of it. Oh, yeah. Really, I mean, nothing's going to top it. Nothing's yeah. going to top Dookie, though. I don't know if American Idiot. Really American Idiot is the, the that's just me, though. That's me. That's just me. Well, it's like, funny when it, when it came out, people were just like, they're always dumb. Call me a nostalgia. I'm pretty sure it's. I think it's my favorite. Call me a nostalgia, but, like, I, I can't help it. I like it. Yeah. I take Dookie over American Idiot. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, it's because like I'm, I'm such like that's my thing with pop punk. Like I get old school Green Day, but like I draw that line of punk with pop. I, it just gets too gimmicky and too jokey. Like I, I'm such like old school punk guy. Yeah. All the way up yeah. through like hardcore. Um, like you one of my favorite bands shows you can tell. Yeah, I mean honestly, <laughs> like one of my favorite bands is like Fugazi. No, nice. uh, and like nice. that's Shit. that's like my my jam there. And like I guarantee you, if it came off of uh, Discord Records, I like it. You ever listen to some Sex Prisoner? <laughs> They're the shit. God you some fucking Sex Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so there's this band. The way I, I like to call them is they're like helmet core. Like, <laughs> don't you fucking touch my helmet! <laughs> like, they're fucking vocalists. Okay, the drums do nothing but do 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 and the vocals. Oh, 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 oh. Just, I saw a band that sounded just like that. Um, there's a, there's a. There's a place in in Lancaster called American Bar and Grill, and they oh, have. Oh, dude, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, they that have. Is the shit. They have punk shows. Wings are the shit. There, yeah, the like, dude, you should get their veggie quesadilla. It's like veggie nine quesadilla. pounds, and it's just all these roasted vegetables with like this cheese glue holding it together. Oh, yeah. I still feel bad. Veggies are okay. Do are okay. recommend, but anyway, they have these punk shows uh, on weekend nights, and I went there just on a whim a few months ago, and there was this shirtless dude. Of course. Playing the drums in the middle with like two guitarists behind him. And what? he had a microphone duct taped to his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, This is a song about skateboarding and smoking pot. <laughs> like for like 30 seconds. <laughs> and then he'd be like, This is a song about your mom telling you to do your homework. And you're just like, Fuck you, mom. <laughs> like the exact same. Meet like the same song, just we like the a, second person. We, <laughs> we have a song about um, being fondled by grandmas. Yeah, huh. once you go old, mm. you never go back. Yeah. Mm. That's uh, huh. that's, fun. We did a, that's a that's a twofer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Also, also, uh, we have a song called what was it? Oh, we have a song called "Lose the Dentures and We'll Talk." Yeah. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. This is a negotiation. You know what? I did notice that you all have a song called Suffer, and I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't a cover of Napalm Deaths, You Suffer. Sorry. There's no one here that gets the reference. I am too. It's cool. It's okay. They, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, by the way. Yeah, two, two, songs, two songs. We oh, God. Yeah, we didn't mean to interrupt you guys. It's like eight minutes ago. <laughs> so, like. It's it's essentially a pop punk song, and like, I just get really really bored playing pop punk. Mm -hmm. And like uh, back when I first started picking up bass, I was like really in the thrash, so I like playing a lot. Um, and, and like I've got a weird background of like classical and jazz as well. Feel that. Um, 
So, like, I kept hearing what you were doing, and I'm like, I got nothing for this. And I think you finally yelled at me, just do whatever you want! <laughs> so I did, and I pretty much have melody for half the song. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we told him, we're just like, if we don't like it, we'll tell you. Just do work. fucking whatever. <laughs> it works that way. Sometimes. It's cool. Yeah. You'll know yeah. exactly what we're talking about when you hear it, and... I know that's what we're talking about songs that nobody has heard. Yeah. <laughs> shows. But, but his bass part is wonderful. I just wanted to write a melody, and I, I keep I kept rewriting it, and I just kind of weave around was, your vocal. It's great, band. though, because I, I think it was, you know, it, was, it would definitely feel lacking without it. You know? Yeah. And it's just like, it was It was a lot of fun to write, and it's always a lot of fun to play. But, like, live, we're just talking performance. I gotta go bricks. Because... At the end of the set, it's always a toss-up of, like, um, Pioneer, Bricks. I know we're doing Pioneer a lot lately, and I'm so down for it. But um, last time we were at Kaleidoscope, we ended with uh, Pioneer, mm. and we actually got an encore oh, called. Yeah, and then we did And bricks. we did Bricks. And the thing with me and Bricks is, like... Um, the entire the entire set it's it's always trying to figure out how much energy do I have to the end of the set because yeah. like I I do what I can for 15 years I've had Lyme disease and I just kind of live with it and it sucks oh. so like I have to be very very careful with the amount of energy I have which is funny I say this and then you see me live and you're like what yeah um, yeah but like, the time, like I'll never out guess, once during a show yeah I've blacked out on stage I think three times now nice. uh, all during bricks damn. Because it's it builds up to the end, and I know you drop out of it a lot, but that very, very last section, I almost always scream right at it, and I'm like, I've lost feeling in my left hand before, and I've just kind of, like, came back to consciousness that's while awake. That's the heart and, attack hand. You should probably... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, uh, and I, I just, no, that's not the stroke hand? <laughs> sure it's it's the stroke. Stroke. Just like... With, Having a stroke, or... Just with the... Just like with the... Giving yourself bleeding. a stroke. <laughs> you know. Oh, well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a moment. <laughs> That's worry. band contact right yes. there. It's okay. So great. Uh, but speaking of, <laughs> we didn't look at each other in the eyes. It's okay. mm, I did. Maybe for a second. Speaking of like personal injury, though, there is that time we were playing uh, sidebar and in the middle of flat field. <laughs> Uh, some dude literally fell off a bar stool and knocked himself clean out. That is hilarious. I know. We, <laughs> God, we played there how many times now? Maybe like a hand, maybe twelve times. Wow. Well, nothing like that has happened. Maybe, maybe. It's like us, like, like, and then nine. Flatfield, like flat. I mean, they're all, every song that we play is intense to some kind of degree, but like, like that's that, not what we expected. That one is not like a. A fun, intense, like a just jam out. That's like I don't know. It's kind of it's emotional. It's got yeah. emotional content behind it's it. Content and heavy, yeah. It was like so. It gets <laughs> it gets into it. We're building, and it gets to the part of the song, the bridge, where it's like da 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 da, and it was For like six da 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 da, da. <laughs> <laughs> and then da 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 da. Oh my Is he god. Okay? Da, 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 da. Somebody called 911. Literally. <laughs> it was just. It was, and he looked behind me and he's just like. Just like, no, like, we should probably stop. And we all got up and we're just like, what? There's just this crowd overlooking this dipshit that just. <laughs> oh, and then God. the show was over. Yeah, and then the sound guy was like. <laughs> you got Well, the thing is, like, you gotta stop. <laughs> they, like, roused him again. Yeah. He, like, he was, like, kind of with it. Um. And then I went to the sound guy, and I did not get along with the sound guy that night at all. And I said, so we have three more songs left. We keep going. <laughs> he's just like, the night's over, man. And I'm just like, fuck. So is that a no? You're, <laughs> are we done? Yeah. <laughs> no, what was, like, the craziest thing that probably ever had happen at a show? That like, I guess, aside from that. that. <clears throat> Like, it's uh, hard to top that. There was one dude who was like tripping. I was just playing a beat in between songs. Oh, you know, was, was that like, super groovy? Like, kind was of that beat. outside? I was outside. Yeah. That was at that was at Rock the Dock, and this dude who I guess I used to play without my glasses on, so I couldn't really see anything mm-hmm. other than the two people closest to me. Um, but so I just all I knew is that like so this black dude was hanging out. He's like he. Ran past like hula hands and and the hard rock, mm-hmm. and I was playing this beat, and he just started dancing, and but apparently it was super fucked up, and eventually like cops like escorted him away. Uh, now I need I need I'm I'm sorry I need clarification. Was he like dancing or was he like 
hardcore dancing. He was like, he was like break dancing. Yeah, like oh, and he was like shit. good. He was grooving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn, oh, okay. he was really good. Right, was, there was like a impressive. There was like a moonwalk and shit. And Sorry, whenever some, whenever we get bands on here and they say dancing, that usually means throwing fists. So. Right, oh no, he was dancing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the last show that uh, we actually played, we got a bunch of shit. So we're, we. We fuck with a little bit of porno grind. Yeah. And porno grind is grindcore that is even dumber than normal grindcore. So, <laughs> a lot of it involves, like, you know, wearing the masks ah, and get all that kind of shit, <laughs> looking like serial killers and shit, you know. So, we're all playing, you know, we got the fucking leather jackets and fucking masks and shit on, we're playing. Uh huh. And we put on, like, the most ridiculous, dumb so fucking set. And. We leave, and on my on the way out, this guy from like fucking like Peru. Oh or no, some he was shit. from uh, like, oh my god, was from Italy or something? No, nah, no, nah, continue. I'll remember. remember some fucking continent. Morocco. Morocco. What was it? Morocco. It could have been Morocco. Let's say Morocco. Morocco. He's Moroccan. Yeah. So like Northern Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Some fucking yeah. You know, it's, it, name a continent that's not this one. He's from that one. Or Peru. Or. Peru. Sure. So, Peru or Morocco, somewhere. Same, same, yeah. somewhere in Asia. I feel yeah. like we're circling here. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pick any place from that general, you know, <laughs> circumference area. Camden. That's where we're Camden, yes. <laughs> so. Uzbekistan. Oh, did it finally detach from the U.S.? Oh, did it? Did it? I don't know. Yeah, he fucking stops me and my girlfriend. We're walking and, like, taking a bunch of shit. He's like, you guys wear the masks. Why you? Why you wear masks? And we're like, because we play like porno grind, like we're in a death metal band, we don't, we just, we just wear we just masks, it. like it's, yeah. it's something that we, we wear, just do. Because like, masks are right. That's like a, a terrorist thing. Yeah. Like when you wear that, that means that you're, you're out to against kill somebody. Music. Like you're, you're out against to, like, music. You're against music. You want to suppress that kind of stuff, you know? And it's like uh, music is all about rebel in my country. And it's like, well, here's yeah, like, the mask rebelling. is actually used to <laughs> like to take what you're thinking and like sixty nine it. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's kind of a, like, hey, hey it's, 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 it's exactly like, well, like your country, only the complete fucking opposite. Right? Because <laughs> we're allowed to do that here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, in uh, case nobody told you, we're in America. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more or less. I come to America to play rock and roll. Me too. Where did uh, where did uh, Trip go? Where he ate guinea pig. Was that Peru? Mm. Did he go to Peru and eat anything? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a delicacy there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he went to Peru and ate. Yeah, Earthworm Von I would do it. Remember. Right on. Yeah, yeah, I would do it. Good for him. Did you guys They eat? look like little stuff. They Partake. look like, dude, seriously, they look like, like, when they show the, like, roasted guinea pigs, they look like fucking, uh, baked potatoes. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It was like this. I might try it, but I probably wouldn't be able to finish it. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh. Are yeah. they, like, pre dismembered, or is it, like, no, really it's pre dismembered? It's, it, well, I mean, like, it's got like a chicken. They gut it. And oh, okay, okay. D, fuck it. So right. No, that's, it, I don't like food that looks that. No, it has right. Exactly. That's the thing. I like. I, I can't even do like pick and peel shrimp. Right. Like fish right. with the head. Just still like. On. Just. Why do I have to continue with the, the dismembering pooping. process when I? Why like, not? Well, I mean, that's why Marylanders are so brutal because we got crabs and duns. Uh, the yeah. only time anybody <laughs> will ever eat a crab, eat crab meat, is if they crack it open themselves. Right. That's fair though, but because <laughs> it's like I don't know, but they don't have. Uh, that's a personal thing, right? They there. don't really look at you. Though. True. <laughs> like, a little bit. They're little bitty. They still yeah. have eyes though. At least little, the shrimp have the heads. And the feelers, off dude. They got those little feelers. You touch those feelers. I mean, it's weird. Yeah, that that is weird. Yeah, yeah. little feel. Like, where did, where did I go? I went to hot and juicy crawfish in DC. Where like you just they I think you, they just give you a bag <laughs> and basically like basically just need to be hosed off when you walk out of this place. <laughs> it's just all like they give you these gloves which are just like this big, so that you have no dexterity at all. Uh, and then there's like you touch me, I'm sterile. <laughs> exactly like that. And and then like and there's a bib and what they do is like after you're finished is they just take the the sort of plastic which looks like a drop cloth. Uh, they just pick it all up and throw it in the garbage <laughs> and then put a new one down. And for like 50 bucks, you can get a bag that's like 10 pounds of just crab and shrimp and crawfish and andouille sausage and little corns. And it's all like, you just like, you pick your sauce and uh-huh. literally some asshole in the back has this steamed bag of crawfish, puts the stuff in it, shakes the shit out of it, and then they just, they, they dump it on your table and they're just like, eat it! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you just you like, eat now? I feel disgusting, but it was it was delicious. <laughs> you know what's funny is that they like lobster is what they used to feed like prisoners back in like the 1500s or some shit. Now it's like a yeah. fucking delicacy. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was like the insect of the sea. Like nobody would want to touch it. And now we serve it for like fucking forty five dollars a pound. Well, like plain lobster is kind of dull. You actually have to like. Yeah, you gotta butter, butter, butter it, it you up. You have to butter it up, or else it just tastes like fucking rubber. It's real gamey. Yeah. It's the same with gator. Like, or, gator or, uh, is just, like, real gamey unless yeah, you do something with it. Or, yeah. like, or like uh, uh, calamari is, like, really... Mm. Cr- like, I can't eat calamari that's not fried. I can't do kind of jelly, squidgy things. Yeah, They're like, I feel that. But, well, I mean, it's tough, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can do it, but I understand people who can't. I really yeah, like so, calamari, but you had to have something to fucking do. I really it. like sushi. Mm. That's just my thing. Mm, yeah. That's my jam. She's my shit. Tempura is one of, some of the best shit ever. Okay, so you guys that, came all the way from we, Lancaster to talk about sushi, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got um, we we're probably gonna end what like not twenty thirty minutes maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we uh we got a couple of weird questions for you. It's completely off topic. Of Let's go. Whatever. Uh-oh. Um. All right. So you guys go on a world tour, correct? Right? You got it? Right, yeah. Okay, sure. So you're going on a world tour. Mm-hmm. Um, Opening for Coldplay. Yes. Yes. Let's, sure. So, um, okay. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you get your hotel completely uh, paid, paid off hotel. You don't have to pay for it. Cool. How would you destroy it? I heard uh, Keith Moon used to just like glue everything down, <laughs> like super glue or gl- glue or gorilla glue or some shit. Yeah, yeah, and he would actually go to other people's hotel rooms and then just like glue their doors shut. Oh, uh, so I do that that's as a, a tribute to Keith Moon. That's pretty nice. fucking funny. Well, the, the the, the, like, literally, I want to glue everything to everything, like the remote, the phone. <laughs> like, dude, and we could like lift up a lamp and like pick up an entire dresser. Like, <laughs> bunch of like suction cup dildos, fucking gorilla glue everywhere, dude. <laughs> I did see uh, it's one of those fucking like troll accounts on Instagram or something like that. But some dude had one of those uh, uh, one of those suction cup dildos that you can like mm-hmm. put it on a wall and peg yourself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 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 on the internet somewhere, yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> no, anyway, it was, a, it was a dude on a motorcycle who had one in his hand, and then just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rode up next to a dude who had his visor down and just goes plunk and just ripped. <laughs> Uh, he's right. He can't see shit. He's got a twelve-inch dildo just stuck on the top of his motorcycle helmet. Who did that? What the fuck? Oh my god! That's great. It's great. So funny. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, all right. It's funny watching people like javelin those fucking things. Oh my like there are just whole compilation videos of people just like. This one dude that I watch on YouTube. His name is Pay Money Wubby. Uh, this guy, this guy just does like videos and talks about him and does all funny shit. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like filthy Frank version two. Mm-hmm. Um, right on. So he he did this uh, ad for some <clears throat> like metal poster site that just gives you a bunch of weird metal posters you can stick up on the wall with magnets and shit. And he's just sitting there talking. He's like, I don't understand why my channel is being demonetized. Just out of nowhere, this fucking dildo slaps on the fucking poster board. And he's just like, I'm sorry, displate. I'm pretty sure this isn't what you were expecting. Yeah, but... That's, awesome. <laughs> That's so good. It just sounds like something we would fucking do with our ad advertisers. <laughs> uh, I, I watched this this thing on YouTube. It's called uh, Smith and Sniff. Oh, dude, um, yeah. <laughs> and it's just these. Uh, one is the script editor for Top Gear when that was and now the Grand oh. Tour, and the other guy is just a uh, just quintessentially British automotive journalists just sitting in a car mm-hmm. and, and, and chatting when which is usually great. But they did they just got sponsored by a uh, by a watch company mm-hmm. but they didn't have a sound bite for it. So it would be like in association with this and it would just be Johnny going damn it. Have you ever seen that really fuck it's the fucking ridiculous commercials like Thanks. <laughs> the fuck? Continue. <laughs> it was, um, the commercial where, like, uh, this, this little girl uh, loses her balloon, and the balloon gets caught up in a tree, and then <laughs> yeah. this fucking black guy, like, sees her, and then looks up in the tree, sees the balloon, and the little girl 
looks up the black eye and just, like starts crying. Black is like, yeah, nods and fucking climbs the tree like it's nothing. <laughs> gets the balloon and then comes down, gives the little girl the balloon, and the mom comes over and is like, no, get away from him, you know, like it's just like a okay. racist thing. And you're like, no, get away from him. And uh, the little girl walks away, and mom walks away, and the guy still has his balloon. He walks home to his house, and he lets go of the balloon, and the balloon goes up. You see, like, ten other balloons just sitting up there, you know? Like, he's just the good guy in the neighborhood. He's just like, you know, god damn it. He fucking walks over to his bed, lays down, and, you know, he's, he's black, and the bed's white. It zooms out, and the fucking bed is a toothbrush, and the black guy is some fucking, like, tea-colored uh, uh, toothpaste. Oh and it's God. like a goddamn toothpaste ad. That is the stupidest shit. I swear Who to God. Who does that? It's like a black <laughs> Who the just, fuck does that? He lays down on a bed and zooms out, and the bed's a toothbrush, and the guy's just what like, the what the actual fuck? Toothpaste? That doesn't even make sense. Wow. No, yeah, that's really tugging Christ. at the heartstrings with yeah. toothpaste. <laughs> it just kind of reminds me of, like, car commercials. How they could be, like, literally... Anything, Anything. Until Anything. a car comes into fucking screen. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. you think there's a Advertising movie coming out? Like, a new fucking movie coming out? Like, Mission Impossible fucking 69 and fucking, I don't know where, a fucking Subaru comes out? It's just like, <laughs> Subaru. Right, yeah. Like, Fuck exactly. you. Yeah. Get out of my fucking ads. <laughs> you know why I don't watch TV anymore, you stupid fucks? Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> there was that uh, car commercial for the Super Bowl where it was... Like this uh, father or his son goes to meet his father at this barn and he's like ready to show him like the super nice Porsche or something. Okay. And he's just like, it's, he's, you know, and it's like this whole like feel good, like, ah, oh, your dad's showing your car. He's like, get it. He gets in his car. Come on, scan. And he's like, <laughs> he's like sitting in this car and then you just. See him start going, <laughs> and then it goes back to reality. And someone's giving this dude the Heimlich maneuver. Oh my God. They're just like, that. I've seen that. so fucked. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like almost heaven or what something. What do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So hands up. Who got nightmares from Puppy Monkey Baby? Because that thing was weird. What? Did no. you see that thing? No. It was the, some. Like, I think it was the Super Bowl like two years ago. You didn't, didn't see that either? That? No, I don't it was remember. like two years ago. It was a fucking pu- puppy monkey baby commercial it for, uh, for uh, dur- uh, Doritos or some shit. Of course. It's a, it's a fucking puppy oh, monkey baby. Yeah. And I remember that. Uh, I just monkey, I don't get it. Puppy monkey, it's puppy so monkey, baby. Puppy monkey, puppy monkey. Puppy monkey. And it's just kind of moving this like weird robot it's kind so of way, like stop weird. animation. That thing gave me fucking nightmares. I was like, man, I don't like dolls. And I don't like things that shouldn't move like that. I mean, you must hate like the Chucky anyway. movies, don't you? <laughs> What's up? You must hate the Chucky movies, then. Oh no, I love Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> dolls, things that move really creepy. Well, no, it's more, it's more like like porcelain dolls. I hate mm, porcelain, mm. like the staring ones. Mm. Porcelain yeah. is, yeah, yeah. There's something extra creepy about. Porcelain. When I was a kid, I used to break those on purpose. <laughs> my grandmother would be like, "The fuck happened to my doll?" Be it like, "Worth like a grandma. fortune now, right?" Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. They gotta die. Looked at them and said, "No." And hey, fuck them. They gotta so. die. So fuck them all. Them survive. <laughs> I ain't doing that. Nah, man. You can bite my ass. <laughs> I can't deal that. Fuck that shit. But, um, anyway. How would you destroy a hotel? How would I just... Dis- I don't know how I would destroy a hotel room. Probably just doing something very inconvenient. Like, turn everything upside down. <laughs> Move um, everything one inch to the left. Just, just come on the remote. <laughs> like the I remember in, uh, in college, I used to go into my friend's dorm rooms and turn everything upside down. <laughs> They didn't enjoy that because <laughs> it, it was their mattress, it was everything, it was their desk, it was you know, it was their books, it was their computers, and some shit doesn't matter. Like there's, just, it doesn't matter if it's upside down; you still use it. But like there are a lot of things that are just like really, really, you're fucking yeah. Yeah, they see that and they're like, why? Why is that upside their, down? Their why did you do this? Just propped yeah. up in the corner. Yeah, that's funny. Just being inconvenience. <laughs> um, in a hypothetical world where we are touring the world and no one actually has to clean up after my mess because I would feel like an asshole. Right. Um, how I would destroy the place is I'd probably burn it. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 Literally destroy the place. Okay. Yeah. 
How bit you- by bit, I'd like I'd see uh, how fast does it uh, take to make the whole bed catch fire, um, and then maybe put it out, and then like light the things around it. Maybe go get some lighter fluid to set the things I just put out on fire again. All right, well oh, you're right. on a list nice. now. Thanks. To- <laughs> I think I would. No more international tours because no asshole is going to land on a plane. <laughs> How would you ruin a hotel room? Arson. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of feel, I kind of find, feel like this one because I, I would like to do because the simplistic and minimalist things are the things that you'd like to do, just so people won't notice them at first. Mm-hmm. So, like the inconvenience factor, like I would poop in the tank. Oh, the an upper decker. Yeah, an upper decky. Upper decky, dude. Yeah. That's another. That's, yeah. you know, that's, that's another uh, Earthworm Von Doom song, dude. They got a song. Called, they couldn't do upper uh, upper deck. Up, upper decker. Upper, decker, upper yeah. decker. They couldn't do upper decker because it was already a song. So Damn. they did upper decky. I like that a lot better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it starts off. It's just they're a bass and a drum duo. So it's like mm. it just starts off with upper like, decky. I shit in your fucking toilet. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably tons of fun to hang out with. Oh, they're fucking great. <laughs> so, the Tom Segura and Sketch, like, if you stay in a hotel room after I do, shit is going to itch on you. <laughs> 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 coming to Maryland live. I really want to see it. You, you saw him, uh, you? about a year ago? Yeah, a year ago or awesome, something. Dude. My brother just went went to the fucking Jimmy Fallon show in New York. Oh, my oh God. sweet. Yeah, that, that was, was good. ridiculous, dude. So... <laughs> Uh, SS Paradry or Paradry Copter? The Paracopter, dude. Yeah, probably that one. Yeah, the Paracopter. Oh, Paracopter. Copter all the way around? You want that boat? No one want the boat? <sighs> Paracopter. All right. What about the PP Paradry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that. The dingy. The dingy. The dingy. <laughs> the dingy. <laughs> Dude, just you can you can, uh, you can pull a barge that has a festival playing on it. Hmm. You can like with the dinghy, or like a, like a tugboat. Uh-huh. You can tug a fucking like barge that has a festival going on on it. That's a yeah. That'd be pretty tight. <laughs> Wait, are we the dinghy or the festival? I don't know. Oh, it depends. Dinghy and the festival. Maybe maybe. Dinghy is the festival. Maybe. Dinghy is the festival. So just ride your It'd be funny if you guys played on the dinghy, but the crowd was just on the thing that you were pulling. But are they playing with their own dinghy? <laughs> now that is the question. Are we, like, are we renting a dinghy? or? No, we're literally asking you if you're playing with your dicks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, this isn't where the put on punks go. <laughs> Um, I used to have this friend in high school that, like, I'd be playing drums, and he would just teabag me, like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time, I was, like, sort of, like, leaning against a stool with the oh, marching shit. snare drum on, and I just felt this on my elbow, and he just, like, plopped his dick just, like, right in the middle of my elbow. <laughs> it's like, the fuck, Dasky? Why'd you do that? <laughs> oh, and that little part of your elbow, every time you do this, is a little bit sticky, right? Right, so, yeah. You know what he would do? Well, he would be, like, he would be a little... He'd be like in the pool or something like that. He'd be like sitting on the raft and then just like, hey guys, look. And he'd just have his dick out. And then just like grabbing the top of it and then just like gear shifting it. It looked like Gumby. It was insane. <laughs> Wait, his dick was green? No. I don't, and again, my glasses weren't on. So oh. just from. <laughs> he got gangrene in the dick, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe I shared a pool with that guy. No, he would fucking do. Be like, I'd be dead ass. Like, hey, dude, I got this riff. What do you think of it? I'd be playing as the dun dun because we were fucking shitty goddamn deathcore. But it's like, gong, 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 gong. While I'm playing, while I'm playing my shit, he would just like, yeah, 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 and then reach over on my guitar and start down tuning it. Oh. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> Pretty much. That's, that's sludgy. That's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We did have a song that uh, I did down tune the G string. I, I down tune A E A. I have a seven string A E A D G B. Tune that bitch down to G. It says G E A D G B. Mm-hmm. Oh God, the fun. Oh, yeah, so slime. So much head. The slime that can be achieved. Oh, we're big fans of slime. Yeah, yeah mm. I like slime. So, <laughs> if you were to boil down your five most essential things for touring, what would they be? Like band. must haves. Let's say let's, let's say, say without, clothes are already. Let's just, the, let, let, let's let's say that your instruments are also. Yeah, clothes and instruments. Yeah, so. so we're supposed to not be boring. Is what you're saying? What's the think of things that, of course, we don't. Is transportation included? Is yes. yes. Oh, okay. 
You don't get to take your sweet little Lambo with you. <laughs> Deodorant. Your Batmobile. Deodorant. <laughs> Deodorant. Fuck yeah. Oh, so you're trying to be boring. Jesus. No, no you want that. <laughs> What I usually end up actually taking is, like, I'll take my laptop with me. Laptop. Um, that way, uh, there's a lot of downtime on touring, so I'll go to, like, a coffee shop or something <coughs> and catch up. I'm more productive on tour than when I'm home sometimes. Okay. Because uh, it's, nice. it's a new place, doing new things, everything's exciting, and you're not caught in the funk of life. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to bring a new book with me every time I go. Um, what are you reading now? Oh, God, what am I reading right now? Okay. Um... Kind of in between books, I was reading um, Kerouac's On the Road for the first time. Okay, by who? Um, Jack Kerouac. Okay. On the Road. Um, and I, I was reading that for a couple months, and then I just fell off of it. But um, I'm thinking of picking up uh, Burroughs' Naked Lunch soon. Because I hear really, one. really good things That's about really that. That's a really good book. Did, um, you, did you read The, the Inferno? Um, That's a good one. Like Dante Dante Dante. Yeah. Oh, oh! I I started reading that when I was on a tour and lost the fucking book. That was that was intense. Yo, I have a twenty fifth <laughs> year anniversary edition, like gold paged edition. Oh, sweet! You wanted it's yours. Seriously? Yep. Okay, it's sold. Dante Algieri's Inferno in like red velvet, like bound oh, binding and everything. I love a gorgeous book. Dude, he cool. has he has literally like so many books. I have a that fucking he library. He doesn't house. know what to do with them because yeah. he had he already bought like most of my books are like aspirational. Like I made it a third of the way through that one and halfway <laughs> through that one twice. I'm kind <laughs> of the same way, honestly. Like I'll make it halfway through a lot of, but like of War and Peace, Jesus Christ, I will never make it through. That's like a fucking like. <laughs> 1300 pager yeah nothing, no yeah no. No, I, think, I, think, I think the the most the most series that I've actually finished the most times was the uh, Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones oh series. right on like I, I I've read like the first book of that I think I've read like five times uh, the second and third I've probably read twice the fourth I've read uh, probably another six times. Wow. It's it, it's a great series, dude. Shameless self-promotion. Anyone who wants to read uh, along with the Analex with us of Confucius, we already he's, have... He's reading that now on the channel right now. We're already right up on. to chapter six on our channel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's we awesome. do like little read-alongs on the Podunk Punks, yeah. It's fun. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> we're starting off with that, then we're going to do like the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah, we're gonna, hell yeah. Like, we're gonna, all kinds of shit. We're going to read that one together. It's he's like doing, he's doing the Analect by himself. Uh, I wanted to do War of the Worlds by myself, because I love that book. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway... Let's get back to the question. Yeah, laptop uh, yeah. books. This um, is digression. The show. <laughs> yeah. I usually take like um, I always pack in like groups, so I've got all my gear all together, so I can just go to a place and take gear. Then I usually have like um, a sleeping, not a sleeping bag, but a bag of sleeping stuff. That's like if I'm crashing at someone's house, I'll take that. And then I've got like my laptop bag that I can take to, um, uh, and they're all like small. Um, things, a laptop bag that's got like notes or anything of the projects that I'm working on. Um, and then I have just like a drawstring bag that has like my daily stuff in it. Um, Prozac. Tums. <laughs> Tums. Nice. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Okay, some meds. Wait, yeah. so Prozac isn't in there. What? 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 Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what we have is a failure to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also like to take a nice pair of headphones, some like noise right. canceling. So uh, no matter where we're at, I mean, you're you're with people for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end, depending on how long the tour is. You're gonna get sick of each other. You can't always get alone time. True. Just like personal in your own world yeah. time. So noise canceling headphones. It, it's it's a world of difference. Now, is that is that one of those things where you guys if you guys are on tour together, it'd probably be like a give me like an hour to myself kind of thing. Like you need you your personal to, time. Yeah, so like you know you're in a car. Sometimes it's nice, like when you get into a new city, to just like find that coffee shop because uh, that there's usually parking around those. It doesn't. I try to get to like non Starbucks one, yeah. and then it's like again they're usually in a good part of town where you can walk places, and it's just like be back here whenever. Okay, and cool. it's just you, everyone can go do their own thing. Um, See, and that's a good way to do it. Yeah, I, I've I've noticed that some bands actually talk about that way being like the best way to get yourself alone time and we're pretty good at not talking to each other <laughs> as well so like, <laughs> basically the whole trip down here we just kind of put a record on and 
didn't really say anything. Who's the most antisocial one in the group, you think? Me. You think? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't like Who people. Who do you think's the most extrovert? Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Fun one. Makes sense. Uh, fun one. What's it fun? <laughs> <laughs> That's the <a> link. <laughs> uh, I can't commit to fun. Well, I wouldn't that say totally I'm an extrovert yeah. out of necessity. I <laughs> I'm, I'm actually I'm the funnest one. I, uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of the fun one. I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. And deal with it. I'm the jokes. I just get tired of people, and I'll disappear from a venue for like half an hour. What's your favorite venue to play? Natural Gallery. Natural Gallery. Gallery. I like that one a lot. I didn't finish that last question. What's that? The essential thing. Oh, shit. Fucking duck. Jeez, Louise. Like you said, digression. The shit. <laughs> so we got your five. Fuck you guys. Let's move on. What? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, five things. God damn. Oh man. Uh, I'll I'll bring Nintendo Switch because I'm not well read. So <laughs> hey, you know. well read. Um, I'll probably also bring a book just because I'll get bored of the Switch, so I got to read a book. <laughs> um, he goes cross-eyed after about an hour and a half of playing it. So. <laughs> Um, we, tw- we need uh, that just so he doesn't Super like Smash Bros. Right Fuck now. yes. Yeah, yeah, just trying to get through that. My friends are all obsessed with fucking Tetris 99 right now. And it's so, it's just, it's stupid. Like, I mean. It's the same game. It's the same it's just, game except you're battling people. Like, <laughs> it's the same, it's like, it's like, a, do you remember Dr. Robotnik's Bean Machine for the Sega? It's literally, it's pretty much AJ. What did I say about that time? I'll throw that fucker out the window. Anyway, so. It's yeah, like like you you got the two player mode where like you get every time you get like a, a match you get like rocks and it falls on top of the the opponent. Mm. But it's the same fucking thing except you're it's a hundred people doing it to each other. It's, it's so weird. It's stupid. That's I don't like sounds it. ridiculous. James is probably gonna watch this and he's gonna be like, Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Tetris ninety nine for life, man. I swear, dude. <laughs> It's gonna be great. I love you, James. <laughs> love you, Doc. Don't, don't, don't kill me. Bro. We have a couple hardcore, actual like watchers of this podcast yeah. who legitimately watch like every episode, and they're all like pretty, 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 pretty into the video games. You yeah, can say, yeah. yeah. Well, whenever there's a video game discussion or debate that we have on here, it's it's just edge of the seat. Yeah, I get I get shit for some of the stuff I say. It's like, what the fuck do you mean they should remake Goldeneye? <laughs> Why? Well, they did it's that so one time, and it was a total fucking garbage heap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, Perfect Dark, they gotta, they gotta remake that perfect shit. Perfect Dark that, would be a good shit. fucking game. Didn't they do it was that? Like, it was no, like, no, no, that was Perfect Dark Zero. Yeah, yeah but that sucked. <laughs> Nothing is good stuff. enough for you. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, <laughs> Switch, book. Switch, book. Probably also <laughs> some sort of... <clears throat> Maybe I don't know. Uh, Flesh a box. Right. I was just about to <laughs> say pocket. Pussy. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Took my joke, you fuck. Uh, some, rest some, off, some... You have to like wash out your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that video of the guy that keeps all of his money in it? He's like, oh, God, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the money's in the middle. He's got to fucking like hold it in the middle, and he's, he's got like all this lube dripping out of it. <laughs> it's like a fucking sticks uh, his hand in there, digging around. It's a teddy oh pouch, dude. Yeah, it's like he uses his fucking wallet. He's like, yeah, that'd be four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, do you mind if I pay in change? <laughs> That's oh man. Oh, I was crying. Well, would you look at that? I cried. <laughs> <laughs> So besides the pocket, I can't it, it, <laughs> some headphones or something to keep myself fucking away from these two. <laughs> so uh, the pocket pussy. Oh, so like horny goat weed tablets? Yeah. Horny horny Hot twins. Yeah. Hot <laughs> twins on repeat. <laughs> Apex twin. Oh shit. Yeah. How were you? Uh, this is, yeah. I was gonna say the same shit basically. <laughs> Head, headphones, books, podcasts. With the headphones, yeah. Yeah. Um, almonds, almonds, deodorant. Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> almonds and deodorant. Colostomy bag. <laughs> Together. 
Just <laughs> I'm like that dad driving, just like, I don't want to stop. I'm not stopping. Shit. Dude has to pee every shit. 45 minutes. I'm just like, hold it. Get the catheter. <laughs> <laughs> not pulling over. Just get it in. What? You, you get to empty hey. your bag in Virginia <laughs> in six hours. Hey, uh, empty his forgot. bag out the window. Hey, Nick, I forgot to put the uh, catheter in. Can you help me out here, bro? <laughs> help me, bro. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. What would you guys like prefer to uh, tour in? Like, um, I guess by by bus, by by train, by uh, by air, sea, ship, yeah, air, land. If you had your preference, butterflies, butterflies, horseback. Holy shit, horseback. Okay, a oh. million fireflies. What, wait, what about what about that one guy? Balloon travel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What about that one guy that like, put up like a hundred balloons on like a lawn chair and floated up to the fucking stratosphere? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean up? He up. was yeah. really <laughs> bored. True. So <laughs> sounds like fun though, probably. Um, do you guys have any other shows lined up besides the? Uh, was it the one on the twenty eighth or 29th that we this, said? This Friday. Yeah. This Friday. The 29th. The twenty ninth yeah. at the Chameleon what, Club. What else is coming up? April fifteenth. We're playing this uh, festival at Millersville University. Dope. Millersville U, okay. Yeah. Uh, opening up for Young the Giant. Ooh, okay. Wait, that's not the 15th. <laughs> it's that Saturday. It's the, it's the 20th. That's 420, isn't it? No, it's not. No, it's no, the previous it's weekend. 13th. 13th. Is, is it 13th? Uh, and this, uh, this end of that? May. Or end, April. Of Ma- end of May. Playing Station in Lancaster one. again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nick has uh, his kind of solo thing. And there's a gig yeah. coming up. What's yeah. What's the solo project? Uh, <laughs> it's called It's called Nick Coven the Wandering. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. I play yeah. drums in that. He too. plays drums in that. So okay. he, 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 like he's recording very, it. So sounds like a very <laughs> nomadic. Same thing but different. Yeah, same thing but different. <laughs> it's It's dope. It's, the sounds, songs are different yeah. for sure. It sounds very nomadic. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. More acoustic driven. But uh, sure. what kind of sound do you think? Uh, <laughs> no, it's good. Chris, it's good. Chris Cornell specifically, yeah, <laughs> like his his solo stuff. I like. It. I really like his solo stuff. Uh, Noah Gunderson, yeah, it's really good. Um, Dustin Kendrew does. Dustin Kendrew, uh, you know, acoustic y stuff. All right, so aside from that, you guys have those couple shows, and um, you said you are currently writing new music as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when should we expect to hear some of that? Like, actually, I know you, you said you're playing it live currently, but um, how about on wax? Playing some of it live. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. Deliberately holding some stuff back. So, so, how much do you have, or do you not want to tell yet? How much do you have uh, it, behind the dam here? EP is worth, but we're trying to push it to a full length if we can. Okay. Okay. Full length being what, like ten, twelve, ish, safely. Um, okay. This, I mean, Deep Alive was too long to cut vinyl. I mean, we could have done a double LP, but... Uh, oh, that would have been beautiful. Yeah, but money like, who has the money for that? Hmm. Not us. Um, so, I think I, I'd be happy with, you know, keeping it under 44 minutes and finally being able to cut vinyl. Because that would be, you know, that's a, That'd be cool. that's a bucket list thing for yeah. Like, anybody. Yeah. Yeah, you know, fuck you, dude. We're yeah. trying to get tapes. Yeah, tapes. Oh, yeah. Cassette tapes. Cassette. Every oh, time yes. I'm at one of those indie shows and I see cassette tapes, I really just want to pee all over their merch. Stand. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, shit. Like, no, thanks, no. dude. <laughs> Let me go find a 94 Cavalier so I can listen to your fucking record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm the one with the actual tape deck I in their stereo it. system. Do you have a tape deck in the Subaru? No, no, in my apartment uh, and the studio. Same, bro. Feel that. <laughs> a lot of the black metal bands get really pretentious with the with the tapes. They're like we're gonna put our stuff straight to tape. I'm like, how the fuck are you gonna how sell you literally money? anything? It's an interest. I'm surprised that you know. I don't know. I can't. I, the straight to cassette thing. I don't. You know, know. Fuck it. We're gonna go straight to eight track. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm just like, like it, how far are we commit, going, dude? Yeah. yeah. Commit. Fucking wax dude. cylinder. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna wax cylinder. Give me a little dat tape. Oh, dat. <laughs> <laughs> Beta Max, yeah. Beta fuck, dude. Give me a, be- that's a big fuck. Give me a floppy. Nah, Beta Max was <laughs> about this big. It was what only. Were, what were those big fucking like? Laser disc? Yeah, laser disc. <laughs> yeah, laser disc, which was like the, the giant. It was like the pre DVD DVD. Oh shit! Yeah. Do you remember the Neo Geo Gold? 
Yeah. Dude, yeah, I fucking do. Fuck. Do you guys remember the Neo Geo Gold? I don't. They had fucking cartridges. The games were all like two hundred dollars each, and they had fucking like they were like this big. They were like fucking giant tape tombstones. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys. You guys opened up for ten years. Uh, Banshee Bash. I don't oh, think yeah. I did want to ask, by we the way. Can we, hear, can we expect to hear those songs in 2019 or you think 2020 ish? 2019. 2019, okay. 2019, yeah. So, <clears throat> so what were you saying? Yeah, you guys opened up for 10 years at Banshee Bash yeah. in 2016. How was that? Tell us what. It was a cool. Uh, was that was that when it was like Fleet Week and there were like jets flying around and shit? Or was I that think so. Else? Um, it was cool. We didn't actually get to meet the guys or anything like that. They were really late. Uh, for whatever reason, no, they were fashionably late. Super fashionable. Super. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not they knocking were, them. I'm sure it wasn't their fault, but it was. Uh, so we were, didn't really get a chance to to see them. Or, they were Gucci brand late. Coach. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's right. Look at you with the brands. Slap it with the cool. dude. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a cool day. We played on the the side stage. Didn't we? One of them we did, I was, and then for another one we played like on the main stage. Was that we played two that, festivals? That, that wasn't there. called a banshee bash. That was called something else. Yeah, it? what was that one? I have no idea. <laughs> was that the rock out with cookout? Oh yeah, that was that one. Yeah. That was that one. Yeah. Okay. What was the uh, first venue that y'all played at? The like Autobar. 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 Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nothing oh, before that. Like it was just straight to Autobar. Uh, uh, as we, Paradry. Our first show as Paradry was Noise in the Basement. Okay. No shit. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Were you guys was... on, um, were you guys on Night of Your Rock and shit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. The, the night before our first that? show, 2013. I, I'm trying to think, because I always listen and to it. It fucking movie. snowed. I had to limp uh, this shitty Pontiac in the snow down to the auto bar. Oh, I forgot. All of my pedals and gear bag at home for my first show. Ooh. So then I used someone else's amp up. Are you serious? I they had an overdrive pedal and I was and it kept turning off. Whoa. So I just kept hit smashing that on button and oh. uh-uh, that, that didn't. Uh, just like thanks. 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 It smells like electrical fruit. Yeah. That uh, that happened to us when we played Guido's. Except that was my fault. I was driving my brother's Lexus like 100, 100 and something miles down the road yeah. uh, up to Frederick, and I brought my drumsticks, my cymbal cases, didn't bring any cymbals. So I hit up Damn. my, uh, I hit up one of the dudes that were playing before us. He gave me this, oh my God, dude. I said, all I need are three cymbals. It's all I need. I have my hi hats, we're good. I just need all, just three cymbals. And uh, he gave me this fucking ride cymbal that had a mega bell on it. Oh my god! And it <laughs> sounded like shit. Yeah, oh they're my trash. Can. It was. It was. It wasn't even a trash can. Trash can lids. It was like. It was like. It was in its own cave. It was so bad. I hit that thing. It's like, boom! I was like, oh! <laughs> he gave me this China symbol that was literally ten fucking inches. Oh my god! I was like, okay, what am I supposed to do with that? So and it sounded like a me, rabid cat losing its lunch. Yeah, and then he gave, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he gave me a twelve-inch crash symbol. That's not. A but crash I made symbol. the fuck. That's I made the shit symbol. work. Remember That's that? like that is the least effective three group of symbols I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, you got shit that involves like blasting on symbols yeah. and shit. And I remember that little thing being like all over the world because it wouldn't like reverberate like a normal symbol and the just drum, do that. Dude, like, like I had to use the the ride symbol as a crash symbol. Right. Oh so, like, if I remember so, correctly, Mega Bell rides don't really sound great as crash. Cool, cool. I'm like They're double like gong- kicking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm freaking. I'm fucking <laughs> double kicking like as fast as I can. You just all you hear is. <laughs> it was yeah. fucking terrible. Yeah, that's. Gross. I was so sad. I was so sad. This is why we need to bring our own equipment. <laughs> Remind me next time. So, um, I, let's uh, before like we we stop or anything. Let's get a little like uh, some personal details about you guys. Like, um, I'm single. <laughs> Ladies, oh, let me get him. Oh, oh no, please. Yeah, let's get him. Yeah, yeah, right. So this is going on your Christian mingle. Uh, what is it? Uh, was it farmer meat or something like that? Oh, farmers, farmers only. Farmers, farmers, only. only. farmers you only. You don't yeah. have to be lonely at farmersonly.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love how you just 
<laughs> said that. I mean, yeah. fat life. That's funny. Gotcha. Fat life. Fat life, gotcha. <laughs> you don't know what that is, do you? Wait, no. Fat, fat life? Oh, gee, it's oh not, tell them what fat life not, is. Fetish dating site. Oh, rad. Yeah. There, you can go really in there. Really pretty woman poop on your chest. One of the old... <laughs> scat me up daddy Just saying, yeah. scat me up dot com dude scat daddy there's actually a fucking there's a test you can take on FetLife where you can find out what your fetishes are wow yeah like no shit I got there's, like, there's like a list of kinks online there's like 400 of them that's an interesting way dude remember when like Pornhub only had like 13 categories no I know. Uh, well. <laughs> there was a time. There was a time. I was then had like only a couple. Of just, and I was like fucking fifty. God, it just shows how long AJ has been going. Man, on. I've been, I'm, I'm a long time Pornhub attendee. Do you attendee. go on there to look for answers to like general questions? I do. Wait, how, what? Do you go on to Pornhub to look up answers to general questions? Oh, I mean, I very well could. <laughs> Have you seen the instructional videos? On Pornhub, it's literally anything that you can think of. How to tie a tie? It's just some naked bitch tying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, dude. Earthworm Von Doom's gonna release their music video. On yes, I'm, I'm doing their music video, is and we're awesome. gonna release it on the Pornhub. And I told him, you know what? Just so it's considered porn, we should just get a bitch flashing. It's all we need. We need to get a chick yeah. to flash the camera midway through, just for no reason. Yeah, just, just like and put it away. Yeah, it's all this it. disturbing, mentally disturbing <laughs> shit, just out of nowhere. Whoop. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Come right in the grade A. Yeah, make make sure you make that the thumbnail too. Yeah. So Ram- when somebody Ramstein. clicks on it, they just think it'd be like, oh sweet boobs. Ramstein would be proud. Yeah. Yeah. I you have a pussy. <laughs> I have a dick. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, how the fuck do I recover that question I from all no that? Oh clue. Oh yeah, I don't know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite interest? bands, sports. How about them Ravens? Who? <laughs> 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 like watching a train continue to de- 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 <laughs> Yeah, Yes. <laughs> you keep trying to save it. I'm adamant that you do not. <laughs> That's okay. Salvage this conversation. It's okay. Hey. Just we have to tank it like right down the hole. We do ask everyone this fundamental question, though. You're not going to squirm your way out of this one. What's everyone's favorite porn? What are you watching? We have asked every band. Every list. band we've had on here, they, they've answered. Uh, I will give you mine. Like like, like category mm-hmm. cream yeah. pie. Mm. That's cool. That's usually <laughs> usually it's it's public cream pie. <laughs> it's more danger that way. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes caught too. <laughs> <laughs> I I will double down on that one. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm not alone. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna make T-shirts. I've been going out of my way to watch like scripted porn, like porn that has like a really deep storyline and shit. You fucking pants. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but just because it's out of the norm, like wow, you know what? I'm gonna be here for a little bit. Let's watch something. Yeah, might as well get invested. <laughs> I like I like Stoya's uh, Around the World in Eighty Ways. <laughs> that's a good, I've seen that. That's a good series. <laughs> oh my she God. seems gold. <laughs> There's a video of some chick breaking the record for how many time how many dudes she can fuck in a day. Yeah, what was it like fifty like, six or something? Fuck! I mean, how it was like, what? It was like <laughs> uh, let me. Let me look that up. Cause I'm she had one on a bandolier and just like just. It was literally like a line. It was, it was a people. line. It was a conga line. Not like fucking each other, but like it was just people waiting to yeah. go in. You get 30, every like yeah, you get, you get thirty seconds and then That's you get out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, that lady got her day of work in. That's a, what was that? What about you, Cooch? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Cooch. Uh, probably more amateur because I hate how it's overly. Yeah. It's it's so overdone that with stars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh my god! I never saw this coming. <laughs> Get it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said JLA. Do you remember that? What the hell the is J- that? JLA. It's J- jerk off instructions. JLI. 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 I don't know why I said A. I thought he said A. Whatever. It's a fun game. You yeah. JLI. <laughs> it's literally it's just some shit. Slow down. You had to jerk your fucking dick off. Lisa Sparks had sex with 919 men in a day. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. That's like 850 more than we thought. (laughs) What? Yeah. 
And there was a scoreboard. It was funny. There's a whole video. It's like a four hour video. You could fill like the Union Transfer with that many dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how many that's how many floors the highest building in the world has. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? So I was I was just kinda like browsing through our uh our thing, little portable device, and I found Hunter S. Thompson's daily routine of drug regimen. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you guys want to hear about like, that? Yeah. Uh, I would love. This is something we'd normally go over on yeah. our show, but you yeah. guys should totally be I, in on this. I, fig- I, I figured it'd be nice to talk about because we were talking about books and shit. So, all <laughs> rest Thompson. And so, and we like drugs, so it just works. That way. <laughs> AJ, go ahead because you're the read guy. Uh, okay, so Hunter Thompson's daily routine is both predictable and outrageous, if not apocryphal, according to E. Jean Carroll's biography, Hunter the Strange, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so here we go. This is his schedule. 3 3 p.m. rocks. 3 p.m. We're starting off. Mm -hmm. 3 p.m. Wake the fuck up. This dude rocks. 3.05. Shiva's regal with the morning papers Dunhill cigarette. 3.45. Cocaine. 3.50. Another glass of of Shiva's Dunhill cigarette. Uh, nine four ninety five or four o five four yeah four o five first cup of coffee and a Dunhill cigarette. <laughs> so he wakes up in an hour later. Has forty five. <laughs> wait, uh, twenty 20? minutes after his bump. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it so four o five first cup of coffee and a Dunhill cigarette. Four fifteen cocaine. Four sixteen orange juice and a Dunhill cigarette. Four thirty cocaine. Four forty uh, four fifty four cocaine. Five o five cocaine. 511, coffee and a Dunhill cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's like, he's like five or six lines in. Yeah. He's been awake for two hours. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and I get the a, motor rolling. This is a regimen. This is, <laughs> this is literally he got a late daily start. Shit. Like you said, you gotta get that motor rolling. 530, more ice in the Shivas. So he just, <laughs> just throws some ice in his fucking drink. Uh, 545, cocaine. 6 p.m., grass to take off the edge. <laughs> Two and a half hours in to take off the edge. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Seven oh five because it. All right, seven oh five. Woody Creek Tavern for lunch. Heineken. Two margaritas. Lunch. Two cheeseburgers. Two orders of fries. A plate of tomatoes. Coleslaw. A taco salad. A plate a of tomatoes. Of, a plate of tomatoes. A double Is he pregnant? order of the onion fuck? rings. A double order of onion rings. Carrot <laughs> cake. Ice cream. Bean fritter. Dunhills. See. Another Heineken. Cocaine. And one for the ride home. <laughs> A snow cone, a glass of shredded ice over which is poured three or four jiggers of Shivas. Jesus. Whoa. Then, uh, then eight p.m. Cocaine. Dude, this guy has Keith Moon lit. Ten, <laughs> 10 p.m. Drops acid. Eleven p.m. Chartreuse, cocaine, <laughs> cocaine, grass. grass. <laughs> Eleven thirty, cocaine. Oh, what are you talking about butt pussy. <laughs> Midnight. <laughs> Hunter ready to write. He, so he's ready. So now he's ready to get to his day of writing. Hunter ready. Hunter <laughs> write. <laughs> Holy crap! So from twelve oh five to six a.m. Charis. Chartreuse. 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 Uh, cocaine. Grass. Shivas. Coffee. Is this an as needed basis? This is as an ad needed basis. This is a daily okay. regimen of what he does. Between twelve and six. Between a. M. twelve, actually, between twelve and when he goes to bed at eight twenty p.m. a.m. Eight twenty a.m. a.m. Oh wow! So he's he's working hard. Yeah, you know, so he really yeah. only gets six and a bit See, hours of sleep. Uh, Heineken, clove, cigarette, grapefruit. At least he's being healthy. Uh, yeah. Don Hill yeah, he's cigarette, being real healthy. <laughs> uh, Orange juice and gin, 6 p.m., into the hot tub, champagne, Dove bars, fettuccine Alfredo. Yo. And then 8 a.m., Holocon. Halcyon. 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 Yep, which is a sleep med. Yeah, and then Mm. 8.20, he goes to bed. And then rises up and does it all over again. Yep. He's not a big dude, either. Oh, my God. And he died at 66 by a gunshot wound, Mm self-inflicted. So this man lived for a long time... Doing that daily. I'm, I'm amazed he made it that far. I agree. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the massive amount of, of drug use probably had to do with the Cobain-ness. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine how long he would have made it if he done like, off himself. True. Yeah. It's true. Like, but he, he killed himself. He was basically like, I'm old and I can't party anymore. Better so. burn out than fade away. <laughs> you know the song, I don't know if any of you guys ever listened to like 
old Bring Me the Horizon. Mm-hmm. But there's there was a song called uh, Football Season's Over, and that was a poem that he wrote as his suicide note. Oh, that's and it wow. was literally just saying like, "I'm old now. I can't do what I want to do. I can't drink anymore. I can't do any fucking heroin and coke." So, mm. wow. kills himself. Jesus. He was a ma- he was the man though. Yeah, in he terms of writing, man. it was pretty pretty. Fear nuts. and Loathing was one of the best fucking stories I ever read. It delved slightly into like surrealism <laughs> and shit. <laughs> All right, so um. <coughs> I guess that'll plug it off because we're running like 205 now. So, how about you guys go ahead and shill your shit? Talk about your, you know, talk about your future endeavors and shit like that. What all y'all got going on? Put on that spot. What people should check out. Advertise. Well, we're obviously on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and any of the other music uh, online distribution companies. Check out uh, the Dead Sessions. Check out the Dead Sessions. There's still more to come Definitely out. Definitely check out the Dead Sessions. There there's only, more? Yeah, oh, there's only oh, yeah. two. Uh, we have. There's three more. Oh, shit. The really? I can't wait. More. That's yeah. going to gonna be awesome. So, we're, we're like trickling them out. Yeah. Cool. New music? New I'm music. going to dangle this, this new single, but I'm not going to tell you when, but it'll be sooner than you think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else? Restock and merch over the... We're gonna get new merch in. Yeah, new yeah. This will all be products. Right next people coming to see shows. Yeah, so that's what should really happen. Yeah. Seeing shows is the best. <laughs> uh, what all merch do you guys have? Uh, the classics, you know, shirts, what shirts, and CDs, and buttons. buttons. Okay. Hey, a lot what of people just selling? have buttons. A lot of people just have shirts. So. What are you eating? Uh, we're, yeah, we're working on some new stuff. We're making bottle openers. Bottle openers. Mm-hmm. I'd like to. <clears throat> I'd like coffee to get mugs. coffee mugs. Yeah, that's always cool. We hold no delusions about who our people are. No, Uppers and downers. Yeah, like coffee <laughs> mugs <laughs> and like beer mugs, like little beer koozies or whatever. <laughs> Fucking great! Koozies. I bought a uh, I bought a uh, a revocation beer little koozie fucking thing. And it says for your health on the back. <laughs> a revocation like for your I health. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And they're death mode. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> and that's. I mean, we're always talking about stuff. There's always things going through our collective minds about what we can do next and what we should do next. It's going to be a fun spring and summer, though. Yeah, yeah it will be. Hell yeah, so with the Can't wait, dude. great upcoming weather, y'all should get out, go see yeah, Era Drive. It's soon loading dock time. Mm-hmm. Loading dock with the, the door open. Getting loaded on the loading dock. Yep. Awesome, dude. Anyway, I interrupted you, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, we interrupted everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of this show is for you to interrupt us. Yeah. So... <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely check these guys out. I they have my personal fucking endorsement as Great. one of honestly the best like grunge bands. I like personally, I'm not into grunge all that much. Like you know, I'm the typical like asshole that likes like Nirvana and all that stupid shit. But like and like Alice in Chains and like you know everything. But like they're okay. You guys are you guys are like grunge 2.0. You're grunge. You got the groove stuff. Progressive grunge. <clears throat> you, you got like the progressive Sweet. stuff worked in. There, very like Rush and Thule kind of mixture. Fuck me up. And uh, <laughs> yeah, my personal endorsement, Mike. Yeah, I, I fucking loved what I've heard, and I can't wait to hear more from you guys. Thank you, you. guys. Yeah. Uh, keep up the good fucking work. Keep up everything, man. You guys are gonna check these guys out. Paradry on Facebook, YouTube, all that good shit. If nothing else, listen to them for the snare. Yeah, just the snare. <laughs> <laughs> come see us live just to look at my drum. <clears throat> like when you when you come see them live, just pass the drum, just pass the bassist and the guitarist, and just circle around the drum, just circle around him, and just stare at that snare because that's where he gets the power from. Mm-hmm. It's the magic veil of it all emanates outward from yes. the snare. <laughs> The snare is. Much. How, how much is that? Actually, in all, in all honesty, how much is that snare in the writing process? Like, are these, is it around you guys while you're writing all the time? No, it's always on the back burner. Yeah. It's yeah. always in the back burner. It's just like, it's, I need to do this for the snare. It's something I think about. Back <laughs> is extremely important. I mean, I think we probably think about it more. You're where we want to put yeah. the where we want to put the backbeat in something. Yeah, that's that's usually if we have any critique, it's like no, no, no. no. Try it this way. Yeah, put the snare. Keep, just just snare. keep yeah. moving the backbeat around. And yeah. yeah, eventually it, it's it's like a Rubik's cube. Eventually it'll fall into place. Instead of hitting it on two, hit it on three. A lot of it's technical as 
Oh, fuck them. Fuck Andy. I honestly forget which song it was that I was listening to, but a lot of it, the, 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 the way the snare follows the, uh, the like, riffy, groovy stuff that the guitar does. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, the... The verses in Blood Honey are pretty. I think that was it. Deliberately yeah. written out with ghost notes. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Ghost notes. Ghost notes are seem to be your your go to. I quite like them. I do yeah. too. I yeah, it's indubitably. <laughs> so, uh, we're the Podunk Punks. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, that shit. Check these Check guys out. Check out Hair Dry. Thanks for watching, guys. You're more than welcome to come back. Thank Please come on our yeah. show. Uh, come yeah. in on Skype anytime. Uh, we always do our normal shows, usually on Tuesdays. So. We're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, I've already mentioned this in like every one of our last videos, but I'm gonna say it again. We're having a six hour show coming up soon. <coughs> if you guys want to hit us up on Skype and just hang out, watch some videos and shit. Come and go. Come and go. That'd be cool. Um. So I'm Lord My Bedlam. I'm scaling out. Thanks for watching us. Later. Just brain dead